So this is the 2022 Distress Christmas release. And I wanna talk about this. I'll talk about this before we get into all the demo, just so everyone is very clear. And if you're not clear, maybe you are clear, but you can remind the people that aren't clear because even though we're on year two of this, there still seems to be kind of this ongoing confusion about this. And I don't, I don't blame you guys because it is a little confusing because it's new to the world of Distress. But this is a seasonal release, a seasonal collection, meaning these products only come out for this season and when they're gone, they're gone. They're not coming back. They're not part of the everyday line. And when I say they're not coming back, meaning they're not being reordered this year uh, and they are not part of the everyday line. This is our second year of doing seasonal. So a shout out to Ranger for uh, allowing me to kind of do this and just play on with this. So for those of you that are, are in year two of seasonal, thanks. For those that are just your first year, that, that's all right. It's a great time to get started. But essentially they uh, contain products that are only available for this limited time. When they're gone, they're gone. Uh, this, of course, is the final part of the palette, meaning these kits, these sets, sets uh, three and four for the holidays, make up a palette of 24 for seasonal. And I say a palette of 24 because between Halloween and Christmas for the last two years, we now have a full palette. I'm gonna go through all the colors, I'm gonna go through swatches, I'll talk about what the products do, the properties. Uh, essentially what they are, they are mica stain. So this is a fluid colorant with a tinted mica in it meaning it's not just a white pearl, it's actually a color pearl, a color that coordinates with uh, the colors of the stain. Then we have Distress Crayons. Now these crayons are not your typical crayons. These are a mica crayon or a pearlized crayon. So they have a little bit of shimmer, same thing. It's going to be the color of the crayon, uh, but it has that wonderful little bit of shimmer or sparkle. Then we've got some product. We've got Grip Paste Snowfall. So this of course is coming back. Last year we sold it in just a little jar. It was part of a, a multi-pack. This stuff, guys, I just needed, a, just like what we did for Halloween. I wanted a whole jar of, of that particular grit paste. This one, Snowfall, is a translucent grit kind of texture with a clear sparkle in it. So it looks like snow. It's absolutely beautiful. You see how we can use that. And then, of course, the new wood grain. Now, this wood grain, this is actually a two-tone wood grain. Uh, this is a gray. So I'll even, let me grab a couple sheets here. I think I have those over here. Oh, I've, I already pulled them out. Look at me. Look at me. So this is the, the two-tone gray that we did for Christmas. It looks like birch. I absolutely love it. I love just that little bit of gray in there. This was the Halloween one we did, right? So it's black with that gray inside. These are so, so good. This is a textured cardstock, but it's smooth on the back. So it's not like your traditional texture one for embossing. Again, both of these are only seasonal. We do have a regular wood grain that's in the line in distress, and that is available year round. That's this one. So you can see that this wood grain is completely white. So you can totally get the difference now, right? So that's why this is a gray because it is not your, your true white and black. This one, of course, can be inked and painted and stained and all of that. So that's why we have it year round. These are great because again, if you want quick card bases or I know many of you are die cutting, <laughs> it's so good for that because it makes things look like they are done out of wood. I absolutely love it. Uh, I can sell it up now because I've already stocked up on mine. Uh, I have stock of this and I have stock of this, like, a bit. <laughs> well, like 24 packs. So shout out to Patty at Ranger for hooking me up. I probably will get more after this demo because I'm, I just love this stuff. But yeah, I want to take you through and we're going to talk about the colors of everything. So you kind of get it. All right. So let me just take these. So these, the mica stains, these are only sold in kits. These are not sold open stock. These are not individual bottles. Although, uh, as I mentioned last time at the end of season, sometimes you can score uh, open stock bottles. But, but when we launch these, these are only available in sets, right? Same thing with the crayons. They are sold in the three pack just for the seasonal release. That's really important to, to remember. Let's go through and talk about the stuff. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna put this over here because I don't, I don't necessarily need the package stuff anymore, Mario. Okay, I'm gonna take Thanks. that out of the way. Sure. Okay, I'll throw that in there too, perfect. Okay, move that over there. Let's talk about the colors. Whoo, the colors are really, really good, guys. Um, the colors, when I mentioned the palette is complete, this is the full palette of all 24 colors for seasonal. These happen to be the crayons, these, of course, are the mica stains. And the mica stains work on light and dark. We're gonna go through and demo and talk about so many different things that we can uh, work with. But you'll see the colors, right? So we can start. So this is a combination, of course, of last year and this year. So 
If you have last year's, you're good. If you don't have last year's, I don't know if you're gonna find mica stain out there in the marketplace, although I have seen last year's crayons. Uh, several retailers still have last year's crayons, so if you miss those, you can at least get these. The colors that we did last year will be releasing next year. The colors that we have this year will not come back next year. That will be in, in two years. So it's one of those things that if you like a color from this release, you may want to stock up because you're not going to be able to get it next year. You'll have to wait until the following year. But, but doing that alternating palette, it, it's, we're going to see how long that lasts. And maybe next year might be the last year. Who knows? I hope not. I hope we can kind of keep this going because I don't think we need new colors of seasonal. Now we have a beautiful palette. So you can see like this was Winterberry uh, from last year, but take a look at Cocktail Party. This is a new color. Uh, Cocktail Party is a beautiful pink. Now all of these colors, they're not an actual distress color. It's a, it's a mixture of current distress colors. So for example, this is a mix of Pick Raspberry and Kitsch Flamingo, right? So instead of choosing a brand new color, we're like, let's do like, you know, two part Kitsch Flamingo to one part Pick Raspberry. And that's really how these colors came to be because you can use these mica stains with the other colors of distress. I still wanted it to work with the palette, but I didn't want it to be exact. I want it to be just kind of fun, but take a look at that. Really, really good. And we can see, I mean, I love all of these so when I swatch them, I just put them on watercolor paper. I spray them. This one happens to be craft. Uh, the peppermint stick last year, really nice red, very traditional. It has a, a, a beautiful red pearl, but it has a little kind of goldy quality. But take a look at tart cranberry. Oh, this is such a good red. Oh, so, so good. The colors go in. This, of course, Halloween that we did. We talked about the Halloween release. If you missed it, you can watch the live from Halloween. I do believe this year's Halloween. I still see it out there. Uh, it hasn't sold out. So uh, if, you, if you haven't picked up Halloween from this year, I still see it out there. But we've got Carved Pumpkin. I really love this one, right? So take a look at this color. This is Burning Ember. You're going to see a lot of different, different things to do, right? All of the different colors. I'm not going to go through each one because I really want to talk about it more when I'm demoing. Right, but you can see now the greens, we've got all different types of green, like Holly Branch just really had more of an olive color. This one is a brighter green. This is kind of a, a traditional green. I do love Bubbling Cauldron from last year. Right, this is another, this is a new one. This is Fresh Balsam. I love this color. It's kind of like bundled sage and a little touch of frayed burlap. It's, it's kind of a dirty, soft green. Mm, so, so good, right? That was our traditional green. These, this is another one, uh, with Mario, we were working yesterday at, we, we prepped all day yesterday. We had so much fun. So thanks, Mario, for the help. We had a really good time. But this one, this is Merriment. This is a new color. Look at this. This is like, this is kind of a mix of evergreen bow and cracked pistachio. Mmm, it's so good. It's a beautiful, beautiful color. This is Shiny Bobble. This is another new one. Shiny Bobble's a little touch of salvage patina and some broken china in there, right? I really love the color. It, it looks, I mean, you can see from a distance, it's a much lighter blue, but see how, how the light hits the pearl? That's what's cool about these mica stains. They're a lot of fun. Uh, we did this one, Snow Flurry, last year. I love this one, Winter Frost. Take a look at this one. It's a, a very cool blue, kind of stormy sky uh, with a little bit of weathered wood, that kind of mixture in there. It does have a beautiful wintry frost to it, and I love that uh, silvery blue pearl to it. Such a great color, but totally different than Frosted Juniper last year, right? The colors, gosh, 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 we talked about uh, the Christmas colors and then, of course, the brown ones and, and the dark ones we did for Halloween. But you can see that it's a great palette now of 24 colors to work with, right? Does mica spray have a texture? No, it's completely smooth. There's no texture to it because the mica is fused in with the colorant and it is bonded to the surface. So you can use it on light or dark papers. This is craft. You can also use it on black. You can use it on uh, color cardstock. But the nice thing about this particular product is that the mica, when you shake it up in with the colorant, it fuses itself. So you don't need to seal this. You don't need to do anything. It does its own magical thing. It is meant for porous surfaces, right? Things that are porous. So this is not going to work on metal and plastic and all of the non-porous things that people seem to attempt. This is really for porous surfaces. But I like having some swatches. I like to just do uh, dark and light because to me it really helps. This brings out more of the colorant, right? The dye. This really shows the dance of Oh my gosh, look at that color, tart cranberry. Look, uh, it really shows the, the mica color quite a bit, okay? Then we'll talk about the crayons. So as I mentioned for the seasonal crayons, they have a little bit of a, of a shimmer. So you can see when the light hits it, that reflective quality. So these are all a pearlized or mica crayon. It's the exact same formulation base of 
distress crayons. So you can do all of the things you would normally do with distress crayons, the smudging, the watercolor, the color, all of that. But these have that shine and shimmer to them. They work on, oh my gosh, I love them on craft. I mean, sweet mother of Micah. That's just good right there. See, just coloring that. And that's just direct because the crayons will dry. They go on very kind of creamy, almost like a, a lipstick consistency, but then they will dry to that wonderful shine. But of course you can watercolor them because they are water reactive. So you can still color, you can go in with a wet brush or a water brush and you can watercolor and you'll still get that, that mica that carries through throughout the product. Because again, these are meant to be water reactive. They don't separate. Okay, so where the, the color goes, the mica follows. So beautiful. So it is important to, uh, to understand the difference in the products because you can do so much. Then when we talk about grit paste snowfall, this is the stuff, guys. This is the, the holiday magic right here. I've always wanted, uh, I remember back in my, again, back in my Ben Franklin days, I remember this like snow texture stuff we used to sell. And it was this really cool textury stuff, but it was completely white, like gesso white. And if you smeared it on something, wherever it touched it, you would get this white streak. So even if you didn't want it, you tried to wipe it off, you'd have this white sludge. And I'm like, eh, I want something that's a little bit more icy. The beautiful thing about grit paste snowfall is that when you put it on, it has this wonderful snowy texture. I don't know if the light's catching it, but it has translucent glitter. So this isn't a silver glitter or an iridescent glitter. It just sparkles, well, like snow would. It has a little bit of diamonds. You can build it up texture wise. It'll dry with whatever texture you give it, but it is translucent. And I say that meaning where it's thin, you'll be able to see the surface underneath it, whatever that is. And as you build it up, it's still translucent, but when you put enough translucent stuff on top, it becomes more opaque. So just be aware of that, that if you wanna completely see through it, you're gonna to wanna to put it on a little bit thinner, but if you wanna really see kind of the buildup, you can build up the texture, okay? Snowfall stuff is just, it's good. And I'm going to demo that too. You're going to see all sorts of things that we can do. So let me, let me get set up for the demo and then I'll talk about, well, as much as I can, because I've got a lot to do, a lot to do, a lot to share, lots of fun. Let me put this down and look in to see. I did pretty good. Normally I put this down. It's a bit wonky, kind of like my brain, but that's all right. Okay. Wonky is good. Wonky is good. Let's talk about this first, because I shared this when we did uh, Christmas, when we did the Christmas launch. And we talked about crypt paste. I'm sorry, Halloween. Oh my gosh, see? I told you, I can't even keep my season straight, right? Halloween or Christmas. So for Halloween, we did an entire jar of grit paste crypt. And for Christmas, we have grit paste snowfall. Two very different products, right? Halloween crypt, which I love. I showed this. So if you, if you missed this, believe it or not, this demo is, uh, I had to look for it last night. See, this is where I, I got a little kind of crazy. This demo for Crypt Paste is in the ideology Halloween. Go figure, whatever. It's because I'm sure I had another idea, but this, I talked about how you can take uh, the Crypt Paste and you can tint it with all sorts of different mediums, right? To, to create moss or to create like this, a uh, cool Spanish moss or a brick, right? Or rust. So if you're looking for the demo on how to, how to tint crypt paste, it's in ideology Halloween. You might want to make a note of that because, well, I forgot. I'll probably put that in the YouTube description for the Halloween distress because, well, whatever, that's just me. But this, of course, was the catalyst for snowfall where I thought, would I want to tint this? Would I want colored snow? But then when I did it, I'm like, yeah, because now it's not about snow, even though you think snowfall. What this is, because this is a translucent, sparkly paste, right? It's got that great texture to it. Imagine using this all year. That's the importance of, of this demo. So you guys know that so you don't say, oh my gosh, you need to come out with this in April. I want, no, it's this Christmas. But take a look at when you tint it, that you can create a very soft, very colorful, textured sparkles. So for Valentine's Day, this would be beautiful through a stencil with roses, flowers. I did all of the colors. And when I say all the colors, I mean like pastel colors. So for example, this is spun sugar. This one right here is tattered rose, right? Beautiful color. And again, just that vintage texture because it still has such a softness to it. I don't know if you guys can see, I don't know if it's better close or further to really understand uh, how beautiful this is. Dried marigold, right? Nice peachy. You may think, oh, I don't want yellow snow. Well, it's not yellow snow. Think of this as more like lemon ice. 
So this would be beautiful at Easter where you're doing maybe a sun or florals. Ooh, I love this one, right? This is a little bundled sage, beautiful color. Oh, take a look at that. Cracked pistachio, minty. So think of texture for, for Easter, your Easter makes. If you're, if you're going through a stencil and you just wanna add a little bit of, well, a little bit of sparkle. The colors are just stunning. I love the look of this, a little tumble glass. One of my favorites, this one's speckled egg. I'll talk about like how you can even do this because we can tint it for snow. I wanted to do ice spruce, a little shaded lilac, a little milled lavender. I mean, you could go on and on, imagine that. So I'm just gonna show you how, how to tint it because it's really easy and also that's gonna give you ideas that how you can use this paste for other things because sometimes when it comes to stenciling, yeah, maybe you're gonna stencil with ink, maybe you're gonna stencil with paste, or maybe you wanna stencil something that just has some color, right? So like Valentine's Day, you wanna just do some like little pink sparkly hearts through a stencil that has texture. Well, instead of having to put the paste and then having to go and color it, this is also gonna give me that translucent effect. That's really important to remember about this product is that it's good. It does look like, Alicia says it looks like peeps. You're totally right, that, there you go. Just do a little peep stencil. Mm, it does. It makes me want to peep, Mario. Oh, see, bring, I'm sure you do. That doesn't surprise me. Okay, so I'm just going to take some grit paste. This is a new jar. This is, this is jar number three for me, I think, so far. I just, I go through this stuff. So that's the other thing that you think about, like, oh, a jar is going to last me. It'll last you if you don't use it, absolutely. Um, but it won't last you if you plan to use it. So just kind of keep that in mind. I take a palette knife full, so I just kind of scoop it from the back. You can do as much or as little as you want. I use just a, peach, a piece of deli paper. You can work right on your craft mat, but for, just for the sake of the demo, I'm gonna do that. For this, we're going to work with a re-inker. Now this could be any type of water-based re-inker that you have, but you're gonna wanna make sure that it's gonna be a dye re-inker, meaning if you use oxide on this, it's going to take away the translucency. If you use an oxide re-inker because oxide is dye and pigment, it's going to make this opaque and that's not what I want. I love the fact that this just kind of looks translucent and sparkly. So distress ink is going to work, but any uh, water-based dye. So alcohol ink is not good. Alcohol ink will cause some really weird separation because that's a solvent ink. So water-based, water-based. This one happens to be speckled egg. And I'm just going to do one drop. So you'll see, okay, the little eyedropper. See that drop? Not one dropper full one drop. You can always add more, but there's no takesies backsies unless you just end up, you know, dumping your entire jar. And then I'm just taking the palette knife and I'm spreading it, scraping it, spreading it, scraping it, spreading it, scraping it, that whole thing. And just mixing in that color, right? And this is going, speckled egg is just beautiful for Christmas because I know, you know, I love the white snow, but I think if you were doing a background, sometimes we want the snow to have just that little tint of blue. And I think that's what's so, so perfect about being able to tint it, right? So here you can, you can spread this through a stencil, but this is what I love. I'm just using a Distress palette knife. This is my favorite shape. It's like a little sports car. But see, you can really spread that out thin if you want that. And this is going to dry translucent. So even if you see it, it's going to dry lighter, okay, than, than you see in there the color is going to be a little darker. So this will be more translucent. The color will just amp up a little bit. If you wanna add even more texture, like through a stencil, you could then take your palette knife and you can tap the top of it, or you can go in with your finger, right? So sometimes if you just wanted to add like a little snow on something, you can you know, just take that and just use your finger to go around the edge of something. So that's another great way that you can use this paste on a card. So you would mix it, maybe put it on your craft mat and just take your finger or you could take a brush if you don't want to do that and kind of leave it like that leave those little those little chunky nuggety bits because that's going to still dry and adhere to the surface beautiful right a very cool way to to work with these kind of of mediums and sometimes again if you look at something at shelf level and you're like oh snowfall okay snow you don't really look past what it could do and I think seeing all of these things and using uh, the whole idea with, with, work, with working with color is going to be really, really important. The other thing to remember about the textures that we do, and this is for all the paste that are in the Distress line, these remain pliable even after they dry, right? So the, all the paste, the texture paste, the crackle paste, the grit paste. So once this is done, if you wanted to die cut this, I saw someone ask, can you die cut it? Absolutely, you can die cut it because it remains pliable and flexible. Could you run it through an embossing folder? 
Eh, you probably could. I don't know, you know, it's probably gonna smash all that cool texture, but I'm sure you could do that as well. But that's the nice thing to remember. So like someone mentioned, you know, sand. This is antique linen oxide because I like that little dirty sand. But if you wanted a cleaner sand, I think antique linen in that would be really, really pretty to make that, that light sparkly uh, sand. Or you do the blue and then that kind of looks like a, an ocean. Just really cool ideas to work with the texture. And it's also important to, I'm just gonna use a little bit of water just to clean off my palette knife. Uh, really important to just remember to take your products and use them in many different ways. But more importantly, I like to share what you can do with it. And that's what a lot of this demo is about, about different ways to use the product so you can use them into, into the year. And you're also gonna see them used into the year next year. And I don't want people to be like, oh, I wish I would have known I would have bought more at Christmas. This is your get it now kind of warning if this is something. And for those of you that uh, that purchased products last year. You kind of know how much you have or haven't used of last year's stuff, or maybe you didn't use it because you were afraid it wasn't coming back. Now you can knowing that last year's colors will come back next year, so you'll be able to, to restock. So I just like having swatches. I think it's beautiful. The color, that sparkle, I think it is gonna be really beautiful for Valentine's Day. I think it just in a Valentine's idea, and you'll see conversation hearts. These remind me all of like conversation heart colors. I do that through a, a stencil, which I kind of did, I think, last year with regular texture paste. So good fun. All right. So that's that's the snow. So we'll talk about the products and how this works. Now, for now, um, I have my my stains in in a distress ink pad storage tin. Right. So this is the distress ink pad storage tin. I took out the insert and I have all of my mica stains laying down. They're kind of a little wonky. Believe it or not, the tin, the tin that we've been talking about for a couple of years, it's finally gonna happen. We're, we're thinking it's gonna be January of next year, which is exciting, uh, because the tin that we're working on is one tin, it's a multi-tin that will fit your uh, Distress reinkers, right? So it fits these bottles, perfect. It also fits the Distress paints, flip top or dabber, and it will fit uh, any of these small bottles of sprays. So it's a tin that has interchangeable things, so one tin can do all of that. But for now, because I wanna put them in something, I just took out the insert and this works. It's not really uh, the best, but it's gonna work for me. When I, when I go to use them, I like to have my mica stains laying down when I'm ready to go because it puts the mica this way, right? Along the whole edge of the bottle instead of at the bottom. So it makes mixing it up go much, much quicker just by, you know, kind of ringing it like a bell. So you can see how it just, it mixes it up really, really quick that way instead of trying to break up that sludge. So if you're going to use your mica stains or when I should say, not if, when, I would suggest laying them down somewhere. Maybe you have a tray, maybe you have a box. Don't just put them on the table because they like to roll off, but put them somewhere uh, on their sides because it does make it so much faster to shake them to go in and use your sprays much quicker, okay? Crayons, this just happens to be the crayon tin, so of course they fit in there. So I do like to keep all of my uh, crayons completely covered, right? Um, someone says they don't leak on their sides. Well, if they leaked, I really wouldn't put them in like this. So as long as the lid is on, they don't leak, okay? If you don't have the lids on, then yes, they will leak. But no, I, I would certainly not suggest you storing them on their sides if they were. This is how I do mine and it works great. For the crayons, okay, I like to keep these separate from general population because although the lids are a little bit pearly, they're kind of hard to see the difference if they're side by side and they don't say anything different, right? So they don't say this is a, a mica crayon or pearl crayon. So unless you're familiar with the colors, uh, these are gonna be different than the regular ones. So that's why I like to have them in the tin. Um, again, how you store product is completely up to you. I think it is important, go, just going back on someone asking about, can this be stored on their sides? It kind of goes back to the ink pad thing as well, where some people like to store their inks on their sides, some people like them sitting upright. There again, if you're ever uh, storing something that you find is not performing well based on where you live, if your ink pads are leaking, or maybe your sprays. Uh, we live in high altitude, uh, and usually things uh, in a bottle in high altitude like to leak out and they don't. So I would say that it's, it's pretty safe. But if you're ever in a place where how you store something is not working out, then don't. It doesn't really matter what somebody uh, tells you in a video or not. If it's not working for you, I don't recommend it. Specifically with ink pads, where some people have uh, issues with the things uh, kind of going. I just saw, yeah, Pauline said she puts an X on the pearl crayons. It's a good idea, just doing a little mark. So you know, yeah. Again, all the ideas are really good. It's important to, re to remember uh, to do what's gonna work for you and, and what's going to make you 
make you work with them. Before I start the demo, I just want to talk about these products because there's always some confusion uh, when we talk about the mica stains and the mica sprays. Okay, these are mica spray as opposed to mica stain. Okay, the stain, these are the seasonal ones that have colorant and a pearl. The mica sprays, these are sold in a three pack. Okay, these are every day. These are part of the everyday distress line. They're, they're in there. And the difference between these two products, the mica spray is only the mica. Okay, it doesn't have any stain. It has no colorant. The nice thing about this, and we also have metallic crayons. Okay, in the same, again, both of these products, these are everyday products. Okay, these are just mica. So there's no color to them. So when you go and use, say, the, the antique bronze crayon, you're just going to see the antique bronze mica. You're not going to actually see the color of the crayon like you would uh, the regular. Same with the mica, and I'll show you what I mean. So these, for example, are the sprays on white. So you can see when you spray the mica spray, you don't get coverage, right? All you're getting is that mica, but the mica is beautiful. So you can put it over anything, and it's just going to add that touch of mica or shimmer to something already colored. Okay, but these are really important to remember that this isn't going to provide you any undertone colorant, but it is still going to be a pigment that sits over the top. So if you're too generous with it, you could essentially cover things up, even though it's just mica. It's, it's beautiful for galaxies and backgrounds because again, it just dries with such a beautiful, smooth texture. I say smooth texture because it just doesn't feel anything. Normally when you have mica, you get like a grit to it and these don't have that completely smooth. Here are the metallic crayons. So you can see again, it has that shine, but when you color these out, you really don't get much color value. So these are beautiful to use in conjunction with other crayons or even the pencils or inks as well. So just know that, that that's the difference between the stains that are seasonal and the sprays and metallic crayons, which are, are year round. So you can kind of mix them up if you need to. All right, I'll put those off to the side because this is all about the color stuff. So first, thing, first things first, we're gonna get some stuff textured. We're gonna jump around to a lot of things. So this I think is where the notepad is going to come in handy for sure. Because first thing I wanna do is we're gonna texture some stuff and let that dry. And while that stuff is drying, then I'll be able to uh, go in and do some inky backgrounds, do some sprays. Oh, I'm just trying to find, okay. I'm gonna just tuck stuff in drawers. That, that's really what I'm gonna do. All right, take a piece of, take a piece of media grip, put that down. Someday media grip will come back in stock. I'm not, I'm not holding my breath, but yeah, it's like we ask tonic all the time. We, we get no answer, but listen, I, I love media grip and I haven't used it forever because I just feel like, Oh, I don't want to use something that people can't get right now. And then I'm like, you know what? I just can't anymore. I have to do it, but it will be back at some point. Okay. I'm just going to take some, some, some backgrounds. Well, at some point, I'm going to take just a few things. I've got some watercolor cardstock. I've got a couple of tags. I'll even do a little bit of craft just so I can quickly get some paste on a few things. I won't paste all these. I just want them to ready because once I get going, I like to just grab things and go. To me, Media Grip is, it is my jam. It, I'm not going to lie. It is my jam. Okay. Well, good thing that you can use it indefinitely. So once you have it, it's not like it's a consumable where you have to do it. Okay. So I have a piece that's going to uh, grip my cardstock and it's also going to help grip my stencil so I don't need to tape anything down. I have a, a whole variety of just different stencils. I think some of them I'm, I'm going to paste through. Uh, maybe some I wanna, I don't know, maybe I wanna print some of those. Let's try that, okay? Take, I just have a piece of cardstock. It doesn't matter what size it is because I'm gonna cut this up. So it, again, you, you do what's going to work for you. Palette knives, I like to work with the Distress palette knives. It's just two different sizes. There's a, a large one. I normally use this size for uh, applying paint or gesso. Anytime I'm doing paste or anything, I just like this sports car one. And yes, I have many of them because, well, like most things, I set it down and then I can't remember where it is. So uh, I like to just have a couple. Plus, if I'm changing paste, I don't have to worry about cleaning it up too much. I'm going to apply texture paste for these, okay? Two different types. So the, again, this is not the seasonal part. I'm prepping this. We're gonna do opaque texture paste on some of them, and we're gonna do translucent texture paste on some others. And you'll see when we get into actually using them, uh, the difference. So for this one, I think that one I wanna do opaque. We'll start with that one, we'll start with opaque. Ooh, fresh jar. Thanks, Mario. You're welcome. Uh, you can tell. Okay, 
So again, bottom of the palette knife, just gonna take this and when I, when I do some paste, you press it down and you scrape it off, right? So it's like, you just wanna skim it over the top. Uh, it's a fresh jar, so normally when I'm not using uh, my paste all the time, I do like to put press and seal over the top. I've talked about this in previous demos. So the whole point to remember about paste is when you're adding paste to something, you just wanna make sure that you can somewhat see your design before you dismount. If you put too much paste or any kind of medium over the top and you lift your stencil before you scrape off the excess, there's gonna be so much medium that it'll come up through the stencil and it will fall over into the design, okay? So this just gives you a nice, crisp, stenciled edge. I love this one. So I'll probably just do a couple while I have it. Now, again, I'm not bothered by uh, size of paper at this point because I just like to work on backgrounds. I'll die cut them later. I might use it as a card base. Uh, again, with the stencils, I prefer having things that are a, bit, a little bit more haphazard and wonky, like for a card front. I think this is way more interesting to me, to me, than having it going from edge to edge. Some people, this will just freak your freak. Okay, don't freak your freak. If, if you want it edge to edge, go ahead. But you're, you are gonna be limited to the size of the stencil. But people do ask like, why don't you do you know, big squares and six by six and all that? It's just because there's a lot of those stencils out there. I just think a stencil should be some type of cool random pattern that's going to be part of your background, okay? Cleaning stencils, first you shouldn't have a lot of medium on there. See, there's not much because you skim it off. I have a little, there you go, a little pan off to the side that just has water in it. It could be warm water, it could be cool water, it doesn't matter, this one's just cool water. And I just set the stencil in there and I leave it. This is a water-based medium, so by leaving it there, it's just going to, it's just gonna dissolve any of that paste that's on the stencil and you don't have to worry about cleaning it up, okay? The easiest way to do it, then all you have to do is dry off your stencils, you'll see. A Little bit of water on here. Just gonna clean off that paste because that's gonna come right off. And let's do, let's do some more. Why well, I've got the regular paste on there. So the difference between opaque and translucent, and there's, again, many videos. If you wanna learn more about paste and mediums, uh, you can go to timholtz.com or you can go on my YouTube channel. I have a video just on paste and the difference in texture paste and grit paste and crackle paste and uh, all of those. We, we did a whole new repackaging with Ranger this year to really make the education much easier with the labels on the top that kind of explain uh, what, what each feature is of the product, you know, whether it's going to be opaque or translucent, what kind of texture it provides. But I think it's really important to just play around. The nice thing about the opaque one is it is going to absorb colorant. So I'm gonna start drying these. I'm gonna move them over to a drying rack or maybe Mario will put them out uh, yeah. into a, a warm into spot. Warm okay, spot. there you go. You got it. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. I don't need to do a bunch of those. Ah, this is a good one. Okay, let's do, let's do this. I love this poinsettia one. So beautiful. And these are all from Stampers Anonymous. None of these are retired, so you can get any of the stamps and stencils year round. Uh, so a shout out to Stampers Anonymous because they, they just make the, because they make it in Cleveland, Ohio, they can just make small runs of it. And that's what allows uh, longevity, I think, uh, of some things. Plus, it's just Ted. Ted's a nostalgic guy. He doesn't ever want to see things go away. He does. So, and that's fine. I like that. Okay. So, there again, just applying that. So, you can see I'm spreading it flat and I'm skimming it off. That's what I really like about that little angle. Um, I prefer a plastic palette knife over a metal, but again, that's completely up to you what you like. Here's the other thing that I'll point out about how I like to apply paste. You can see I'm very haphazard. You can see that some of it's really thin, some's a little thicker, because again, that's gonna provide a different type of texture. Some people like it to be very, very even, right? So they almost kind of uh, squeegee it on, that's fine. But I think this adds a whole level of interest when you're adding colorant to this as well. So again, that will be fine. I'll put that in the water. Then this, I'll just wipe off the excess. Okay. Sometimes I'll scrape it back in the jar, but if it, if it gets a little crunchy on your palette knife, so this is where I'd put press and seal on that before I put it away. Um, but if you feel that it's a little crunchy on your palette knife, it's not a good idea to scrape the crunch back into your jar. That's, that's not good. Okay. The next one we're going to do is some translucent. So these I'll just do a little bit more wintry. Translucent texture paste is going to dry 
translucent and shiny. And it'll tell you that on the lid as well. This one has a totally different viscosity though, kind of like yogurt or mayonnaise. So it's not nearly as thick, but it does have a great texture to it. So think of it like, uh, almost like a textured glossy accents, but it's, it's much more fluid. Ooh, this one has a little, oh, I think my stencil has a little color on it. That's all right. I'm good with it. I don't want to get too much of that in there. There we go. Look how nice. See, look at the detail of that. Holds really, really well. This is where that whole little tray of water just comes in handy because that, that tray of water allows you to just move on. You don't have to, you don't have to scrape and scrub your stencils. Oh, I love this falling star. This would be good with Otis, right? Great background, but it's also just good for a, a Christmassy sky. So for example, here on the stars, if I think, okay, hey, maybe I want to stamp something. All right, then I'm going to make sure that I don't paste all the way down, right? I'll leave that, I'll leave that negative space like that. So I know I can stamp something because you can stamp over the texture paste, but it's going to look like you stamped over texture paste. So maybe that's something you don't want to do. Okay. Also, if you have any of these little extra things off the edge, you can leave them, but they'll dry like that. They'll dry dimensional to where you either need to cut those off or whatever. But if you just take your finger while it's wet, ah, gone. Okay. This way it'll dry a little bit cleaner. All right. Then, oh, good. Thanks, Mario. I'll do one more and then we're going to move on because you never know. Some might dry quicker, some might not, but I do love this one. Um, I just think that, you know, sometimes when it comes to stencils, like details, oh, especially things that have just some really uh, crisp, sharp lines. I think it's so pretty to see with, uh, with paste. So I'm just going to lift that up. Oh, I had two pieces of paper under there. Thanks, Media Grip, for holding on to both. Nice. Look at that. Ooh, that is going to be, that's going to be a stunner right there. So, so pretty. And another thing that you can do with paste is let's say you just wanted these to be sparkly stars. You could do the snowfall paste through this, right? It's going to be a little grittier or you right now you could cover this with clear glitter and, and dry it. Right. In fact, I think I'm going to do that. Mario, are you here? No, Mario's not here. Mario's, Mario's putting stuff out into the drying room. Yeah. Um, on the spinner, maybe fourth row down. Can you grab the glitter duster, please? Uh, clear rock candy. You should see it. All right. It should be where the jars of paste are. Thanks. Well, because, you know, less talky, more dewy, right? If I'm going to, if I'm going to talk about it, I should show you how to do it. So there we go. Okay. Glitter duster should be laying on its side. There should be two of them, silver one and a clear one. Got it. Okay, cool. I'm going to move this grip. See, it just peels off. You can rinse it. Here we go. I'm going to just take a glitter duster. This has clear rock candy. You could just dump the glitter if you wanted to. Okay. But this is just going to allow me to dust it. So see, it just, it actually sprays glitter out. So instead of me coating this, because if I poured it on, I think the glitter might kind of act like a, like a Chia pet. And I really don't want that to happen. All right. Just. See that? Just a little bit of sparkle. And this is going to dry clear. So it's completely up to you, like how much glitter. And then this, we can just dump it from, uh, you can dump it from the box if you want to. It really just depends on how much glitter you want to put on. I just want to put on a little bit more. I think that's good. So could you just pour it over the top? Yes. But if you pour it over the top, then you risk, you don't risk, but you'll get way more glitter over the top. It will, it will dry chunky. So this, because it's going to be a translucent paste, see that little bit of glitter. Oh, I think I'll just put a little bit more on there. There we go. See, I just like how it just see, it just kind of dances over the top. Now rock candy. This is clear rock candy. This is distress. This stuff right here, rock candy. This doesn't become airborne. So that's why when you saw it go, it just falls right into the splat box and then you could fill it back into the jar. But see, it's nice and it'll dry clear. You'll see, but different than snowfall. Snowfall is going to be textured. This is not going to be textured. So there's always reasons of why you want different things. Thanks, Mario. You're welcome. Cool. So yeah, cause I get to talk about them. You're like, Oh, you do that. You do that. Like, why not just show you? Okay. Moving on, <laughs> moving on. Okay. Take this. Let me see. I put this back. 
just a little bit of grip. And those are just gonna dry. We'll come back to all of those and we'll see what we get from those. I also just wanna make sure that my media mat is clean. So I just take a little Swiffer. That's the best way to get glitter off of your glass if you think you have any. Okay, now we go, now we go. Okay, so speaking of working with, with textures and pace and what you can do, it is important to remember that when you're using pace, different pace are going to do different things. And it's completely up to you what you choose that you wanted to, to create. Uh, Kim asked, what tool am I using to spray the glitter? A glitter duster from Stampers Anonymous. It's a really cool little, uh, great glittery tool. So this one, what I wanted to do is take Snowfall because could I have done translucent and all that? Yes, but I wanted this one to be a little bit more vintage texture. So I took Snowfall grit paste. I placed it through a stencil, that snowflake stencil that I did on pattern paper. And the reason I did that is to show you the translucency of snowfall grit paste, that when you put it through, even like on a printed paper, so if you had any of like, this is an ideology backdrop, any of your pattern paper, you could add that snowfall, but see the texture, do you see what I mean? It's totally different than sparkly glitter. It has a, it has a sparkle to it, but completely different than uh, if you covered it with glitter. And I love that this really gives it a snowy, look but because it's translucent even though i put it over the imagery you can still see the imagery underneath it right so i'll hold that close look at that again very haphazard i like my snowflakes to kind of uh, fade and and come into focus I just think that's beautiful so a great way that you can add to something already done maybe it's going to be something for paper maybe it's going to be something for uh, maybe a store-bought card. Maybe you don't have time to make cards and you just want to add a little something to a card. This is a great way that you could just add some grit paste to it. Another thing you can do, of course, is add this to uh, transparencies. And you could do any kind of transparency. Maybe you're going to recycle uh, packaging. Maybe you have uh, some shrink plastic. Any kind of acetate that's going to be uh, thick enough that it's not going to curl itself. So I normally just decide if I can hold up the plastic and it doesn't... Uh, do this, this is a good plastic to add paste to. If it's too flimsy, you're gonna add way too much weight. But what's nice about it is that we can take paste, I'm gonna still use my open jar. Look at me, I'm like, oh, I don't wanna waste it. That's just how it is. And I'm gonna use my favorite stencil ever. It's number 21, I love this. This is just kind of a splatter and speckle. I do it every, well, I use it all the time, but I really use it every Christmas because um, I love this, the snowy one we did in the Stamp Timber set, but this one is a, a bit more random but also a bit more challenging to clean out. So you have a trade off there. But what's nice about this is that it's going to add that perfect little wintry snow flurry because it's got all those little fleckly speckles. But what's cool about using it with snowfall is that it literally dries on there like ice. Okay, come on, come on. the texture, that little sparkle and putting this onto a panel. Feel that. Wow, it's cool, right? That is really it's awesome. icy. So this would be like taking your ideology. So these are baseboard windows. You could take one of your baseboard window frames and now you've got that snowy, icy window outside. Isn't that great? So great surface for like a shaker card because you can still do this and then do a little shakety shake, but now you already have snow in the window and then you can shake even more snow. Make sense? Really cool, That's okay? Cool. Or you can just take this and if you don't want to use a stencil, you can just put a piece of acetate in one of the windows, and then just add that snow into the corners with a brush, right? So I just built up that little icy snow in the corners of that window pane, just using a little brush, a little paint brush, dip it in there and just, because it's gonna wanna stick, but see what I mean? Uh, unlike using that white snowy stuff, I like the fact that I got some of it, let me just, I don't know what's easier, my pork chop hand or what, showing you that little bit that kind of goes over the top, it just looks like the ice is trailing up. And you could do a little mix of both, but see it dries with that great texture and that wonderful snowy look. So if you have some windows or a window die cut, a great addition to use uh, Snowfall Grit Paste. And I'll just show you real quick. Those look like the windows we buy. I know, right? Yeah, it, they're beautiful. Yeah, this is, this, these are really, it's a, a great pack. I'm so glad this is part of the everyday line. All right, so I'll just show you this real quick because I'm not gonna do like a full-on demo. I'm not gonna get out my uh, media grip again. I'll just show you. The, the importance about this particular stencil when you're working with it, okay? Just gonna get a little 
a little snowfall. I'm always, always put your paste on the back of your palette knife. Don't treat it like a spoon. It's a knife. So pick it up from the back of this. But when you put this down, you definitely want to be very scrapey, if that makes sense. Like, uh, don't, don't smear it on like buttercream. You really want to be a little light handed with this one because of all those tiny little dots. You just want to give it a little more time to work the paste into this stencil. So it's totally worth it. I, I just love how this one looks. Let me take this off just to show you. There we go. Put that in the water. Look at this. And these are going to dry, of course, like icy. But see what I mean about this particular one? There's so many tiny little dots. <laughs> I love this. I will say, though, I've probably gone through, I don't know, maybe that's my third. That's not bad in all the years that it's been out. Uh, the reason is, if you're not good about cleaning it right away, you'll clog the pores, man. You'll clog the whole of those of that stencil. And, you know, unless you want to go in with a little needle and pick them all out, just keep it clean. Keep that stencil clean, right? But take a look at that. So it starts out white like that but then it is going to dry with that translucent icy look isn't that beautiful so so good anyway that's another thing that you can do with with this seasonal release just adding little snow so whether you're going to add a, a little bit of snowfall to a printed paper see look it's just so icy i can't even get over the texture of it uh, or whether you're going to do window panes fun ideas that's what this demo is all about ideas 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 all right, so I'll just take these just so I have them okay. and I'll give you this. Mario and I are doing like the, the trade-off over here. There Thanks. we go. I'll take a few things. Thanks, Mario. You got it. All right, keep that stuff. There we go. Keep it in order. Then next, let's see what I want to do. Okay, next let's, let's get into sprays. All right, let's get into it. Now, when it comes to working with inks, it's really completely up to you how you want to create uh, your backgrounds, whether you want to go into full background mode, whether you want to just do different things with it. I'm going to leave some, uh, some of the mica stains here. I'll probably have some off to the side as well. I would like to work all on, all around my table and I probably will. I'm just going to do, well, it's just like you're in here with me. I like to have everything out there. Really, really good. Okay. Uh, please explain how snowfall grit paste is different from clear rock candy or frosted crystal. Well, clear rock candy is a glitter. It's just glitter, dry glitter. Frosted crystal is a frosted matte embossing powder. You have to heat it, it's an embossing powder. And snowfall grit paste, well, that's the paste that I've been using that is a textured paste that has some clear glitter in it, but it dries with a texture. So one is a paste, one is a glitter, and one is an embossing powder. Thanks, Mario, thanks. Mario tries to point out some questions so I can Try to answer them when I can. Okay, so let's let's just go in and just do some backgrounds. Now you can glove up for this or not. I think just for the sake of of this, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in it. Can you grab me my towel, please? Oh, sure. Thanks. I'm gonna go for it. I was gonna glove up. I mean, I have gloves ready, and it's like, eh, I don't want to. I just don't. Okay. Thank you. So I'm just gonna have a towel that's gonna help me out. And we'll do a few little backgrounds. So for backgrounds, some things that we can do. Obviously, paper is going to be important. You can do watercolor paper. You can do tags. I'm going to do a few of these smaller tags. These are the mixed media tags. This is the number five. This is the number eight. Okay, these are both distress tags. Mixed media is just a really nice paper, a little different than a regular manila tag. So I'm going to like how, how these play out. And I'll work with my paper being a little wet. Now you can work on the smoother textured side of watercolor paper. It's completely up to you how you want to, to use it. Just start with a little bit of water. I'm gonna take a little bit of, of merriment. So again, you can shake it back and forth. You can shake it up and down. If you shake it up and down, just it, again, depending on where you live, sometimes these just wanna leak into the cap. So if that's the case and just ring it like a bell or you can remove the clear and then just cover it with a cloth when you're shaking it up. So whatever's gonna work for you, that's what you need to do, all right? So here we're just gonna take some mica. I'm not gonna worry about putting the tops on this. That's a little merriment. Now we're gonna do a little shiny bobble. Okay, this is a, a beautiful color. And I always wanna shake it till I hear that mixing ball. The mixing ball is in there because uh, it's a little stainless steel bearing that, that bounces around to break up any of the powder. You wanna make sure that you don't have any settlement at the bottom. That's where your little schnozzle is for the sprayer. And if you have any mica sitting at the bottom and you go to spray it, it's going to clog the sprayer. If that happens, you can try rinsing the sprayer, 
right? Try to get it to, to come clean or you can just get a replacement spray. Ranger sells replacement sprayers. I think the soaking will do the trick. Another thing when you're finished with it, you can wipe it off on a cloth. I have my towel right here. It's just hanging off of my hip. So when I'm done spraying, I always get in the habit of just wiping that off. Again, that's just personal preference. It keeps from little mica granules uh, getting stuck in that sprayer. So your paper, okay? The reason I did a little water first is that's gonna blend and mix my color. I can go in and add some water, okay? By adding a little bit of water, adding some drips, that's gonna get a little bit more movement. I'm also, let's see, where's the color I'm looking for? There you are, frosted juniper. All right, kind of shake that up. Beautiful, beautiful. Frosted Juniper, this is from last year, but it's a nice kind of gray color. So see how I can just add that, that little darker, a little darker spray on there. Now, we can let this air dry or we can heat dry. So here's the thing to know about fluid inks, sprays. Sprays are sprays because they're designed to spray. And you want to spray because you want the pattern of a spray. If you want something solid, you can use a spray. It will be very quick to cover it but it's always going to give you some sort of fluid movement. That fluid movement as a maker can be used to your advantage. So just because the paper is starting to curb and it's making that ink go that way, you can pick up the paper and you can have that ink move wherever you want it to be, right? It doesn't have to stay that way. So if you didn't want it going off to the side, see how it just completely changed the direction? So that gave me a little bit more fluid, maybe a little uh, like wintry uh, kind of, I don't know, breeze going by. Just remember that. Then when you dry it, that's essentially going to set the pattern, if you will, as well as the color. So I'm just using a craft tool. I like to dry with a craft tool versus an embossing gun because it's not gonna blow uh, that ink, right? If you have an embossing gun, it's usually a little fast. Take a little bit of water. So after I started drying, it's not crispy dry, but now when I add water, watch what it's gonna do to that stain. It's gonna create these beautiful water spots. I'll show you. See those little spots showing up? That's by adding water after it starts to dry. These are water reactive. Distress is a water reactive medium. Do you have to use a heat tool? You don't. You could let this air dry. You'll get a completely different effect. I'm just gonna show you some different patterns that we can build up. So this is kind of our first layer. Beautiful. So this could be for ocean. This could be for winter sky. This could be for many, many things. The sludge on the edge, I would dry up if I'm gonna dry it completely, but I'm not doing that right now. So now I'm gonna utilize the ink on my craft mat. So I am working on the media mat. I love that it's got a glass side. That's what I'm gonna use for pretty much my building or stamping or anything. But then it has this removable craft mat, right? It's that silicone backing, there's my palette underneath. But the inks play different on this surface than they do here. My inks will remain stationary on a craft mat. If you work on the glass, your inks fuse together and you make mud. So when I'm working with inks of any kind, ink pads, sprays, anything. I always like to work over here because now I can also go into that overspray and just start building those little dots and textures. And as I'm building layers, I'm gonna dry it. So, beautiful. And the more you build, the more intense your color gets. You can see just from that second layer how much more saturated my color is because these are all dyes, these are stains. So stains mean that the more you layer, the more intense the color is going to be. Excellent. Nice, nice. Now we'll show you when we start drying this. So what's interesting about mica stain is that at first when you spray it out, it just looks like ink. It doesn't, you don't really see the shimmer when it's wet, but when it's dry, that's where you're like, wow, okay, now I start to see uh, what that, the whole mica stain thing is all about. You'll see, I'll show you just trying to dry it. Now, when you're drying it, you know, the nice thing about the heat tool, I can be about an inch away. I don't have to worry about moving it too much. You can leave it like that. You can also go in with a paper towel or your cloth and you can dab off any of those dark spots. I like to do that because it gives me a little lighter spots. But now take a look at that background. Oh my, this is where it's magic. And what I was saying at the very beginning is that the mica stain, the mica and the stain become one. They, they maintain... Uh, their integrity throughout. So that means when the merriment is pushed aside with the water, the mica goes with it. So you'll see it always stays true to the texture versus 
an entire sheen of mica. Sometimes if you've used just a, any kind of mica additive to stuff and you use your inks and you add water and all those things, you still get this like layer of mica. It doesn't, it doesn't attach itself to the colorant and that's what makes mica stain so cool is that it does, it attaches itself to the colorant. So any texture or pattern that you're getting with each color Right? You can see over here that shiny bobble, you'll see that it's more of a bluey pearl. And then over here in Merry Mint, it's more of a green pearl. That mica stays with its colorant. Okay, So that's just a great example to, to show. Can you talk about fluming? Fluming, yeah, sure. I don't know so, what that is, but. so fluming is if you have too much pearl things, these aren't going to flume uh, because as I just mentioned, the mica and the, the ink are one. It's a, it's a formulation. But if you're using a dusting like Perfect Pearls or Perlex or other metallic sprays and you get too much on the surface and you touch it and the pearl comes off on your finger, that's fluming. That's putting too much mica on a surface that cannot take it, okay? So even with mica stain, if you added, you know, 10 layers of mica, you would probably get fluming because at some point that mica is not ever touching the paper. Now it's probably touching seven or eight layers of, of ink that you already have down. But Usually up to about four or five layers, you're gonna be fine and you won't get any fluming at all. But other products, yeah, they flume terribly because they don't, have, they don't have a binder in there. There's many people that are just like, oh, I'm just gonna add some pearl powder to my ink and I've made my own, look how easy. It's like, yeah, have a great time. Don't touch it because it's gonna come off on your hands, but that's completely okay, right? Yes. Absolutely. So that's one background. Let's just keep going. Flooming, flouncy. Well, so see, there's, <laughs> there you go, Mario. Mario's like it, so many words. Can you mix product? Okay, well, let's talk about that. Can you mix some things? Sure you can. We can mix, and I'm gonna do this tag first and then I'll go in and show you about mixing with, uh, actually, I'm not gonna, see? Less talky, more dewy. I just say that to myself, like quit talking about it, just do it. I'm gonna take my ink pads. Now you could do this with other spray stains or oxide sprays, but if you have ink pads, you can use your ink pads with your mica stain. You don't have to just stay in to, to one space. I'll take a little distress ink, smash this down. This is an aged mahogany, good, good red color. It's super, super deep. Then I'm gonna also go in, it's gonna really be red. We're gonna do a little tart cranberry because I love that pearl that's in there. And we'll spray that right into that red. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of water, right? Because the water is gonna react that ink. So what this is going to do is this is just going to intensify the color. Mm, mm, mm. A little cranberry, a little mahogany. Okay, just a little water. I'm just moving it around right now. Don't judge layers, okay? Don't be a little McJudgy. Don't be, so, yeah. don't be a little McJudgy. Judgy McJudge is what I say. People are like, oh, I don't like this. I'm like, quit being so Judgy McJudge. Just go with it right? It's all about layers. You're like, but I miss this and I miss this. It looks square. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're not done. If you were done, that would be different, but you're not. Uh, someone asked about captions. I, YouTube doesn't allow captions for live streaming. So this will be captioned after. So after a live stream, if you ever go back and watch the replays, it is captioned then. It's just something on YouTube that they don't allow a live stream to be captioned that I'm aware of. So, uh, but it is captioned on the replay. So any of that you go back and watch, you can definitely see that. Uh, and the captions are on once it's processed. All right, so we've layered this. Let's take a look at that. You can see where that aged mahogany is really coming in. You can also see that tart cranberry and it's just starting to, to build. I like this, you'll see why in just a second. I'm just creating, now why am I using a tag? Because to me, guys, tags are paper. You are the mayor of tag town. <laughs> yeah, but tags are paper. Sometimes I'll use just a sheet of paper. So if you like this this surface, right, this is, this is mixed media. We do sell mixed media. I don't even know if I have any. Oh, uh, let's see. Do I have a pack here? <laughs> Probably not. Cut it up. Oh, I do. Okay. We do sell it as paper, mixed media heavy stock. This is the same surface that the tags are made out of. So if you just like this paper, you can buy full sheets. For me, I just, I like having a tag there. It's convenient. I, I die cut these. I don't even leave them as tags, but it's a, a quick way to really use a lot of color. Yeah. Look at how rich this is incredibly intense. I'm going to show you the difference on, on this one versus the last one, but I still want to add, add a little bit of that. And then I'm going to go in and spray a little bit of tart over the top as well. So while this is drying, we're going to multitask. I'm going to shake this up. 
and then I'm just going to add a little bit of splatter, right? So that is just really not committing to the spray. I'm kind of resisting with my thumb and that's going to give me just a little bit more of a splatter of that. Okay. We'll dry it. The reason I wanted to splatter this on is you'll see where I did that. You're just going to get a, a whole different look from that mica. It is rich. Age mahogany is intense. It is one that, uh, you know, it's one of those colors, especially around this time of year, it's just beautiful. And you could go and go with this color. I mean, while dry, look, just adding more water. You see how much ink is really there because distress is water reactive. Most inks, when you add water, would simply dilute the color. This one is like, bring it on. I'm just going to lay a piece of paper there because I can. Oh, and we'll dry this one too. <laughs> because I can't, I can't not. This is, this is the whole playtime. When you have your stuff out, you can really go in and play. And we're going to do a lot more with those textures as well. I don't want to spend too much time on just plain backgrounds when we have texture stuff coming up, but you'll see. This is, there's a lot of stuff uh, to share with you. All right, I'm going to go in for another dip. So this time, so you saw the first one was like a print. Now I'm just doing the dip. The difference is um, the print, of course, is going to provide more coverage. And by tapping it on, it's just going to be really nice by, by just building layers that way. Okay. Nice. Yeah, new color mix crime scene. It could be, but it's a festive crime scene. So there you have it. I, I think it's beautiful, beautiful colors. And you'll see especially why I like to, why I like to create uh, red papers. Okay, I'm just going to add a little bit more water to this one because I want to break up the party a little bit. So all I'm doing is I'm just, the thing about the sprayer, you can spray it to get a mist or you can slowly squeeze the trigger. See how it little spits out water like a squirt gun. I like that because if I take something porous, I can start lifting off some of that color. Maybe I'll even put some of that color over there. All right, so let's clean this part up. Again, on the craft sheet, when you're working on this mat, start on and off. Don't work from the glass. If you work from the glass onto your sheet, it's going to shove that color underneath. So stay on the surface. Add a little water. Look at this. I've got, I'm multitasking over here. You got everything going on. I got everything going on. I really do. It's just going to clean up some of that mess. There we go. Okay, let's dry both of these just so we can see the difference. So what's really interesting about using inks or oxide with a mica stain is that it will break up the mica even more, okay? And when I say break up the mica even more, because your ink pads don't have any mica, if you're, if you're doing this, this is going to really showcase the color. So it's gonna show the color of, of the ink. That's where we're getting in that saturation of mahogany. And then you're gonna see kind of that, that beautiful mica shine. And the mica shine will be more subtle than it was on this one because this we used all mica stain. All right. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Yeah, you're going to see some really uh, interesting ideas uh, with backgrounds. And that's, that's the whole point of this demo. We start, we start simple and we kind of move, move on from there. So there is, look at that. See what I mean, guys? You don't really notice it till the light hits it. And then you're like, oh my gosh, it's just so good. But you see what I mean by adding that ink? The ink, the ink pad, is going to really provide that colorant. But then when you add that little addition of mica stain, we're getting the, the soft fluid. That's because I sprayed the ink with mica. Then you're getting these little speckly fleckles. That's when I went in with that second layer of spray to add it because that's going to provide more mica on the surface. My point is you can apply these many different ways to get different effects. That's the whole idea behind this. You get different effects. Now, as far as your paper is concerned, remember paper doesn't have a memory. So when you're drawing stuff, just, just bend it the other way. Like it, it doesn't have a memory to, to know. So you can flatten it out. If you have a laminator or a mink, run it through there. That'll flatten it out or you can iron it if you want to. But there you go with that. So good, right? Beautiful, beautiful background. So this one, of course, we just, whoa, what's going on? Oh my gosh. This, the air conditioning was just started on. This one, you see all these little dots? This is because I was printing, 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 printing into this ink, and that's where it built up uh, that tart cranberry with aged mahogany. Just good colors, right? So good. So many different ways that, that we can work with backgrounds. And you're going to see why we want to work with backgrounds specifically in just a minute. And I say just a minute, but it might be a little while. Okay. 
Another way that we can work with mica stains, and I shared this as well, is with stencils. And, and you could do the obvious. We could spray through a stencil and we can also use a stencil uh, a little, little different, how you wanna work with it. You can work directly on a surface, right? But when I stencil, I pretty much like to use a splat box because I don't wanna have ink everywhere that I don't wanna use it. If I'm going to do backgrounds, I work directly on the media mat, as you saw. But if I'm going to spray for a stencil, just for the sake of a stencil, let's take a tag again. I prefer just using a splat box because I want all that extra ink to, to kind of get covered up. So I'm gonna do a lot of, a lot of different greens. We're gonna use holly branch. We're gonna use fresh, fresh balsam. That's this color. Probably not so much merriment. Not for this one. Okay, gonna give it a little shake, right? And just commit, keep your distance. Oh, where is this one? There we go. Mm, I do love this one. Love, love, love. All right. Mixing it up. So I'm really paying attention to this one. There we go. There, it's all clean. Mm, I love this color. Do I do? Okay. So spray through this. Sometimes it's weird if, you've not, if you're not familiar with sprays and you spray through a stencil and all you've ever done is ink blended, you're just going to get a little panicky. But if you just trust the dismount, you're going to see that your sprays are gonna be fine. If you hosed it, meaning when you saw that I was spraying it, I was keeping my distance and kind of moving it, little soft sprays. If you're really close and you're hosing it down, it is going to seep under your stencil, right? Some people use sprays or adhesives. Just keep your distance. Just give it a couple little light mists and once you see that you have ink coverage, trust that, okay? The paper towel also helps from that ink pulling back into your card. You can see that wherever that ink went, it's, it just absorbed into the paper towel. Some people don't like that. Some people may want to do it in a journal page or a card or whatever that is. But this is what we have. And I love the spray for the spray. Remember I said spray is a spray because it's supposed to spray. So those little dots, I want that. I want that in a spray. If I wanted it all smooth and even, I would have just used an ink blending tool or a blending brush and been done with it. Okay. So we can dry this and we will in a second, but we're also going to use this stuff. The stuff that is here, I'm gonna move out of the way. The stuff that is here on this card, I'll take a piece of watercolor. Just gonna add a little bit of water. Just miss that. Flip this over, place it down onto a, just a piece of cardstock. It could be a tag, it could be whatever you want. Again, another get a paper towel, get, get something that's going to be porous. Okay. Something that's going to be really absorbent. And then you're going to press. Now you can use a brayer. You can use whatever you want for this. But the reason I'm using a paper towel is because I'm applying pressure, which means my ink, see how my ink starts smushing out. You see that? Okay. That's what's happening under the paper towel. So if I did this and pushed, that ink is going to leak out into my design. You can see where it's absorbing it. The paper towel is going to pick up all those little dots to keep the inside clean. Okay. Ish. Fairly clean though. Then we'll just go in palette knife, surface tension. There we are. And we'll lift this off. That's going to go right into my water just with the paste. And now we have just a cool mica printed background. So simple to do, right? Very, very simple. And you can create two different backgrounds with that, right? By using the ink and doing the print. The print, I always recommend either, you know, intentionally printing and spraying your stencil or adding a little bit of water just to make sure that those droplets have room to fan out. Okay, that's what that means. If you don't add the water, when you add the pressure, you're just not gonna have enough fluid for it to fill in the gaps. And this is, this is that area where I would say is not enough fluid and that's okay, I don't, I don't mind the fade out. But the water, you can see, that's what, that's what kind of connected the dots and where there isn't any water uh, you're going to have just a little bit more of that, that spotted area. But look at that. Look how this, mm -hmm, mm, I'm going to dry this uh, just to get that really, really good. So sometimes it, you can just take a stencil and just print with it. There's times really that I'll use a stencil and I prefer the print than even the stencil part. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, you don't always have to use both. Some people just like to monoprint with stencils because you can, and it makes it really, really cool. And there's things that we can also do with background. So I'll talk about that. These are both dry now. So you can see that they're dry. Look at that. Oh, see what I mean? I keep turning this on. I think it's the cloth or something touching that. 
that button. Um, you can see that the beautiful mica shine on here. Here, you can also see, see that beautiful mica? You can leave it as is, but you can also kind of feather this out. So I'm gonna spray a little bit of water on this just to get these to start moving around a little bit and then I'm going to dry it. That's just because I like distressed things. Doesn't mean you have to do that, okay? Beautiful, beautiful. I like this drippiness. Some people, it's like, why would you stencil this and have it so perfect and then you just ruined it? Well, ruined to you, art to me. So now I'm just gonna add a few more drops and I'm using my heat tool because I do wanna freeze it. I don't want it to be uh, completely destroyed, but I like the fact that it, my background's gonna look more distressed. It's not going to be that perfect cookie cutter look. I'll take a little paper towel dab off because I don't want my ink drops to be super dark. I don't want them to take away from the trees, but you'll see what I mean. And you could still go in an ink blend and do all sorts of things, but this is what I love about that background. You see how it just, it just made it a bit more me for me. And you do you. I like the fact that I've got those little drips. It also really takes away the pressure when you're stenciling of like, oh, what if it leaks? I'm like, bring it on like that. Thank you. Thank you for helping me with that distressed background because that's already really cool. Yeah, thank you, because it allows me to help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so these are really good print stencils, right? Think about that, that you could take this and you can spray it and you can print that down. This is also a good print. Now, if you're going to print this one, you're going to actually need to spray the ink from the back. So that technique I just shared with the trees, it's not going to be that great with this, because if I were to spray through this one with the words, and then I printed, my words would be backwards. So if you want to do a print with a stencil like with words, it's a good idea just to, like I said, lay it down on a paper towel, spray your stains on the back, and then you can flip this over and make a print. Less talky, more dewy. Let's do it. Okay. Because, see, you can, you can hear me remind myself of that because I, I say that a lot. Like, just, just show it. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. Nice, nice. So I'm working on the back of the stencil for this one because this one is just going to be intentional. Do a little cocktail party on this. I love that. That's just a nice pink. And we'll take a little tart cranberry. Now I do like to shake it each time, but if you've already used it and you're laying it on its side, it's, it's pretty okay to go in. I'll take a little Wicked Elixir. That's going to be nice. That's a, a beautiful, beautiful color. There you go. It's gonna be nice. We're gonna have that little bit of overlap and that's gonna be okay. And then where is, that's bubbling cauldron. I'm looking for, it's way over here, of course. It's in the back, tree lot. It's gonna go a little darker. So it's kind of like bright and dark, that's all. And we'll go to the bottom. There you have it. So a lot of ink, okay? But you can see what our color is. Another reason I like the paper towel, if I'm being honest, I can see what I did because, you know, at some point you just kind of lose it. I do. That's cool. You might want that. You might want backward words, backwards in nice, but you get an idea of, of where we're going with this. Probably not going to use that because I just put ink all over it, but I'm going to do, oh no, that's all right. I'll use this. This is going to be fine. I just said, oh no, because I don't have the paper that I was going to use, but now I'm going to use the paper that I wasn't going to use because I have it to use. <laughs> So I'm just going to use it, right? You know what you want and I can try to find it. I do not. Okay. I, I Here we go. Like paper towel. Let's do this. I know the paper towel is cool. I'm just going to do this piece of paper because I'll just go right in the middle. So this one is just white, white cardstock. It's not watercolor paper. Again, paper towel. You could use a brayer. If you don't want to use your hand, you can use a brayer. This one I just did ink, okay? Could I do water? Should I do water? Uh, it just depends on your, what you're going for. For this, I wanted my colors to be really bold because I'm going to spray it. So I didn't, but you could, okay? Because the last one I did water, but this one, because it was a first generation, not a second generation, I wanted this look, right? That, like I said, that speckly spray look. And I knew I would have enough colorant that I didn't need water. Right, because again, I, remember I sprayed the stencil. I hose that down, but isn't that beautiful? So good. Could we get a second generation print? Let's try. Let's see if we can. Second generation print meaning, is there enough ink on here to do anything? 
I don't know. We're about to find out. I'm just going to spray this with water. I'm going to take it off camera because I want to do a lot of water and I don't want to, but a lot of water, this way we can see, see there's some ink there. I don't know if it's going to give us as intense of a print, but it's going to give us something. So let's just lay that down. Again, paper towel and print. If you just start thinking of paper as just potential art projects, you really get over yourself, right? You don't think that everything has to turn out a masterpiece, but there's going to be good in everything. There's going to be a little bit of good. Really, really nice. I just saw a question. Could you have pasted before? I'd, I don't see why you couldn't. You absolutely, you could put, yeah, you could put paste there before you remove it. Absolutely, you could. Ooh, see, I love this one. I can still see that. There's our second generation. See, you may have just thought, oh, there's not enough to do it, but the beautiful water reactive properties of distress allow me to create that second generation. Again, cleaning this up and we're going to dry, I'm going to dry these things. So two completely different backgrounds. Beautiful, beautiful. These water soluble sprays, do they work over collage medium? They don't really work well over collage medium. I saw a question about that uh, because they don't want to really you can get it to dry, but if you touched it with even a damp finger, they would come off because collage medium is a sealer, right? So it's, it's not going to work too well. It will dry on there though. So if you were going to do something and you weren't going to touch it, then you'd be okay. All right. So here's what we got. Quick dry. Look at that. There is one background. Oh, see that mica. The mica just, that's what's great about the mica stain. It just has that great kind of surprise element. And look how even on that second generation, how it just really comes together and creates two cool backgrounds with a stencil. A lot of fun. All right, moving on. Next thing we'll talk about are stamps. And I did this for a uh, Halloween release. So I want to talk about Christmas because stamping with mica stains, very, very cool. Uh, Suzanne said you need a microphone so they can hear you, but you're not talking. There's nothing to hear. <laughs> he'll, he'll sing though. We'll get him to sing. No? Yeah. yeah. Well, you don't want me to sing. <laughs> um, so stamps, the, the same way I did the, the watercolor, we talked about those watercolor stamps. I have watercolor stamps for Christmas. So here is a winter watercolor, one and two. So these are great solid stamps for stamping with stains, but of course you can use a lot of different ones, really whatever you wanted to create with. I think I'll, I'll just get these out of my binder for right now. I'll put this back. Sad that these are, I've talked about it before, the stamp storage binder. If you guys have your stamps in these binders from Ideology, these have been retired this year. So once the inventory sells out, if you're, if you add it to your collection, bye bye. you don't run it. Yeah. Bye bye. You heard that. He, he leaned in close for that one. Uh, you just, that's going to be important to remember. Bye bye binders. So they're still available now, but uh, they, it was announced this year that they're, they're going away at the end of the year. So these stamps, bye if, bye if bye we're going to, if we're going <laughs> to, I know that was a good one. Uh, that was, that was such a good sound. Okay. I'm going to take, let's just do, I think this will be beautiful. Let's do this Holly one. That will be nice. I'm just going to place that onto a block. I've got a, a piece. Well, I've got a couple pieces. It looks like of watercolor. See, there it goes again. I do. It's so, I don't even know how to shut that off. Okay. Thanks. I'm going to take just some different colors, shake them up, spray this onto the craft mat. This is going to be what I use to stamp with. Okay, where is, there we go, some fresh balsam. Nice, nice. Is there a replacement binder? There is not a replacement binder. It's done. The, the whole binder thing is, they've been out for many years and they're just, they're done. Yeah. You can totally buy them. Yes, they're available now. So, but there is, no, there's not a new one coming. That's, that's just how it is. It happens sometimes. But it had a good run. It really did. But at least this way we get notice. I think, you know, when the brown ones went away, there was no... There was no warning, and so I'm happy that Advantis let me bring them back one more time, but that's about it. I think the okay. binder's been around for 10 years. It's been around for a long, long time. So here I've got just some mica stain on the craft mat. I'm going to take my stamp. I'm going to tap it into the colors, just tap, tap. I like to work with a longer block because see, then I can hold this. The stamp is over here, and I, I don't, I'm not putting my fingertips into the, the stain, but if you want to use a smaller block, again, do, do what you want. I love the grid blocks because they're they're thin and they're easy to work with. So I'm just going to stamp, stamp with purpose, lift, leave it. Okay. Then I'll take a little bit of craft. Could you spray this with water? You could, if you wanted to, I don't think you need to, it's plenty fluid. So just tapping that in there, 
Just make sure that you have ink sitting on your stamp. And you could try this with rubber stamps or clear stamps. Sometimes I think it works a little bit better, right? But then we're gonna take that off. And then we're gonna dry these. Now the thing to, to remember about mica stain is you don't really see the mica until it dries. The other thing to know about any kind of watercolor technique, watercolor technique is water and color. So if you don't like the fact that these look wet, this is not the technique for you. Stick to an ink pad. This is always going to give you a watercolor impressionistic look. And that's what's great about stamps like this. These stamps are designed like that. That's why they're called winter watercolor. These actually came from watercolor designs. So that really fluid uh, look and feel is, is quite, quite magical. I do like that. Okay, so there's a couple of things that we can do. These, I'm just gonna dry it for a second. I'm going to just dab off. I see some heavy ink spots on there and I don't want, I don't want a lot of that ink on there. So you could take it away. If you wanted to do something lighter. So I have a little bit of ink left. So this would be the second generation. Let's, let's do this. I'll just spray this with water just to do a second generation. You've seen kind of watercolor stamping. This will give you uh, a nice lighter look. So it's also really, really pretty to do it this way. It's definitely a bit more fluid because we're already dealing with fluid and fluid. You'll see, I'll, I'll show both side by side. Cause it's not saying you can't add water, but water, adding water to an already fluid medium is just gonna make it more watery. Okay, not that that's, a bad thing. So this was just the stain. You can see the mica, beautiful. This was mica stain with a little bit of water, right? So you just see that the edges are a little bit more fluid. Not that this is, is crispy, but a little bit more fluid. And then you could, you know, you could still add some other elements. You can go in with pen. You could take uh, some, some color. Let's just take, I'm going to clean this off the stamp real quick. So it just cleans with water. Just spray with water, stamp it onto something porous, done, clean, put it away. Okay, we'll get rid of this as well. Stamping with stains, man, I could sit here and honestly, I could probably fill a three hour demo of just stamping with stain because the results are just so unpredictable, but so cool and, and certain images will definitely surprise you in, in how they would work, right? How, I'm just going to take a little bit of peppermint stick and we'll add that. Ooh, more than what I wanted, but I got it. Okay. Gosh, you say one thing's retiring and there's a spin out. I see it in the chat. Everyone's like spiraling. Like it's just the binder, right, not the stamps. The, stamps the, the, not gonna change how the they come. stamp storage binder from Advantis, from Ideology, this is retiring. Not the stamps, not how they come, not any of that. We already talked about Stampers Anonymous not retiring stuff. It was just the binder. Here I'm going to take a water brush. Now you can do a water brush, you can do a paint brush, you could do whatever you want to do, and we can go in and add color back to the top. So if we wanted to add some red, for the berries. I think these are berries. If not, this is where berries are going to go. It could be any kind of brush. It doesn't have to be a water brush. I just happen to like the, the detail tip of the water brush, but we can add that color back in over the top because it is mica. All right. So I think by having, having that little bit and remembering that it is a pigment, that pigment, it's still going to take on a little bit of the green, but I think it's just going to allow just a nice kind of fluid, fluid movement to that. Okay. Let me clean off my water brush in my, in my bucket. Okay. I'm going to give those just a second to dry and then I'll show you that as well. Water clean up. That's why I said it's just, it's more than I wanted, but that's, that's all right. And red is just, it's crazy, crazy. Okay. So these, I'm letting it sit for just a minute. Okay. Give it just a second. Then I'm just going to touch it with a paper towel. It, so it just, it just takes a little bit of that off again, paper towel. See, there's just a lot. Cause when you're, when you're dabbing stain direct on top of something, you could let that whole puddle dry, but then to me, it won't have, I don't know. It won't have the watercolory effect. Meaning if you let that whole drop 
uh, dry. Oh, I should have done this one too. Too late. Too bad. So sad. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. Look at that. So see, you even have that little bit of red. I'll, I'll dab that little guy off. Okay. I'll show you what I mean. You can just, you can see that it's got just that little bit of green on the outline. That's what I like about adding the color. And these could be blended. These could be all sorts of different things uh, that you can do, but stamping with stain and then going in and adding accents couldn't be easier, right? Just beautiful. And you could try a lot of different stamps, a lot of different uh, ideas and techniques. But I just wanted to share that because if you, if you didn't catch it during the Halloween uh, distress demo, and this is the first time you're seeing it, it's cool if you saw it last year. It's just a great thing to remember with any sprays. It doesn't have to be mica stain. You could stamp with any of your, of your stains like that. But stamping in stains gives you a whole different fluid, cool look to, to stamping, I think. Okay, we're good. Okay, moving right along. Let me put these back in the binder. Uh, one and two, there we go. And you can organize yours by theme or in order of the index. Okay, so far so good, we're doing all right. Next up, next, things we can do. Well, we're gonna talk about the backgrounds. I don't know where Mario went. When he comes back, I'll ask him about, I'm, I'm hey, oh, can, can you get the, are the backgrounds dry? Oh, yeah, or the paste dry? Yeah. Thanks. Mm -hmm. He's going to go and get those. And uh, we're going to work on some, some other backgrounds to just to share what we can do. And, and we're going to talk about other things that we can, that we can create with the stains, because the more I think you know about what you can do with different products, the better because you're just gonna get more use out of it. Because sometimes, again, if it's like, okay, here's this product, it sprays it. These are the colors it comes in, have a nice day. And you think, oh, I'm not gonna use it. And then throughout the year, you see how things could go. be done. Thanks. Then you wish like, oh, I wish I would have known. Well, now consider you known, all right? These are the backgrounds that we created earlier. So this one is the translucent paste, okay? This one still feels a little cool on the back. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish drying it, nope. I'm just gonna dry it from the back. I just said it feels a little cool that if your paper feels cold or cool to the touch, then that's pretty much because the paste isn't completely dry on the inside. If that happens and you wanna speed it up, dry from the back, not from the top. So, and translucent just takes a little bit longer to, to dry than the opaque anyway, just because it's a, a wetter paste, but you can just dry from the back and you can see again, paper has no memory. So as it wants to curl, there we go. So here's what, what we have. The, the transparent paste has created this beautiful, glossy, almost resist. And you could have done this with resist spray, but we wouldn't have this texture that we have uh, with this one. And I like the fact that that shine is going to act as a resist for our backgrounds. Anytime we have that paste, whether we have it, so here's the, the stars that we did, right? The falling stars. It's just going to work as a resist. And it has just that, that wonderful, Wonderful shine to it, but I like that it's thick enough that can go through a stencil. So let's work on some backgrounds. We're gonna do a little shiny bobble. Now, if I want my background to already be a little softer, I'm just gonna add a little hit of water to begin with. Then we're gonna take some mica stains and just start spraying. I think we'll even add some purple into this one. Why not, right? A little fortune teller, that'll be nice. Perfect. Then we'll do a little winter frost. Okay, beautiful, beautiful, okay. All right, so, so far I've got my color. I want a little bit more. Not a surprise to you guys, right? Of course not. We should add a little snow flurry just because I can. Uh, there we go. See what I'm doing with the snow flurry? I'm like having it spit and spatter. Okay. Now a little bit of water, not much. If I add too much water, I'm gonna lose my spray design. But again, completely up to you. Now I'm just gonna dry this, just drying it with the heat tool, just to get some of that color to start setting. You can move as much of this as you want. All right, Kathy, while on the treadmill, that is multitasking. I could barely even just watch anything while I'm on the treadmill without tripping. 
Okay, I'm going to dry this. So here's what's cool about this paste. This isn't completely dry yet, but you can see, look at that great resist. You have some options here. You can leave the spray over the paste. You see how like it kind of covered some of that, which I happen to like. But if you don't, if you wanted something a little bit, a little bit cleaner, I'm just going to use that same paper towel to dab up some of this. I'll just take a paper towel, a little bit of water, okay? And just using a damp paper towel, I can go and clean this off. See that? So I can either leave the spray, you see the spray there? Leave it or take it away with a damp cloth. Completely up to you because maybe that's how you want your pattern to be. There's no right or wrong. So if I would have kept drying it with a heat tool, would it have just dried onto there? Yes. I do like that it takes on some of that color, but look at how beautiful that background is, right? Come on with that mica, it's so pretty. And just adding that little bit of purple and mixing in your blues, by having a little water to begin with, that is what automatically blends color. If you start with dry paper and you just start spraying, that colorant absorbs right into the paper and it's very hard to get the edges to blend when you have multiple colors, right? You, you start seeing your seams a little bit more, but just a, just a spray of water, one or two sprays, you don't need to hose it down, is enough that the paper is slightly damp that when the colors hit each other, they just fuse together and create just more of a, of a seamless kind of a, a blended color. Great background, right? Super pretty. Oh, look at this one. Here's that one that we did with just, just that translucent and the glitter. So this is beautiful. This could be inked, this could be just done, this could be its own background, but you see the difference in that because the glitter is actually on it. This is textured, you can feel that, that little chunky glitter. Let's ink this one, let's see what we get. I think it's gonna be interesting to see uh, how, that, how that holds up to, to the back. So for this one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a little different approach. I'm gonna take my splat box and I'm gonna stand it up, okay? So splat box is angled, it's got a long side and a short side. Uh, if I'm spraying down, I like to work on the larger area, but I'm gonna go for an angle this time, meaning I'm gonna stand up my card along the back. So now I, I have something to spray against because I'm gonna spray my color and have it, have it drip down, just because, again, that's, that's what I want. So this is gonna, there we go, kind of in camera shot. So we'll spray this and let's just take, I think I'll do something a little bit lighter. What was this one? I don't think I want frosted juniper. I think I'll do a little shiny bobble. Okay, so I'm just going to spray the top. And then I'm just going to go in with water. And just let the water follow that down. If you need more color, no worries. Oh, let's try something a little different. Let's throw this in, see what we get. I think what's, uh, yeah, that's exactly what I thought was gonna happen, but I don't, I'm okay with it. I'm just gonna see. Um, the glitter, I think, has a little bit more tooth, so you can see it's grabbing around the stars, but I'm gonna be okay with it. I'm gonna just see what we get. You never really know until you try it. All right, so now that it's upright and angle, we're gonna go in and dry. Now those little orange spots, that's just, well, fingers, but. Mm, 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 mm. Cool. I'm gonna, ooh, I really like this. Um, so here's what I've noticed and I'll point it out to you as soon as I dry this. Wow, that's so cool. All right, just gonna dry this complete. And I'm gonna lift this off. So the glitter has some texture to it. That texture is wanting to hold on to the color a little different. But let's see what happens when we go in with uh, here we go. <laughs> a little bit of water on a paper towel. Just over the top, just kind of burnishing it, just to lift off some of that color around the stars. Look at that. I love how the color just pulls up around there and it just really highlights that. But these are still sparkly. Look at that. What a beautiful wintry sky. But another way to use sprays, again, use gravity. That's, that's it, right? Standing up your paper, again, don't worry about that. That's just my inky finger. Um, but using gravity, like embrace the space, having some of that uh, fluid. And if you, want, if you didn't want any white space, then you would have just kept going with water until you saw that the color was complete. But this is just, it's another way to get a, a movement to your background, right? Not everything has to be straight on. You can 
completely use the, the movement to, to create an effect. So transparent paste is going to act uh, as a resist and it, as an adhesive, but our, our opaque, well, that's a whole different animal, okay? So the big difference between those two pastes, right? Translucent and opaque. This one is going to add a resist effect because it's gloss. This one is going to be porous because it's matte. And what's really crazy about this stuff is how well it absorbs color. So we're gonna start with this one and we'll just do a couple of quick sprays. I got a lot of stuff I still wanna share with you. So let's go. Okay, we'll take a few different ones. We're gonna do some, well, I'm gonna start here with some flickering candle, just a little bit of yellow, okay? And I'll just add a little bit to a couple of these just to start. So I'm just going like pretty close right into the center first because I wanted to add a little bit of yellow into those. Then, oh, what am I looking for? Oh, there we go. I need to have tart, this tart cranberry in my life is just, it's super important. Add a little bit of that. Then we're gonna add a little cocktail party or not. Let me get a new sprayer on this one. Cocktail party? Yes. It's up here. Oh, can you change it out for me? Sure. Thank you very much. I don't know why that one got all clogged. Probably because I was a little too ambitious, but we'll soak it and we'll be good to go. Little winter berry. That will work. And then I want some green. Let's see. Let's do a little fresh balsam. I think that's going to be nice as well. It's going to be a softer green because so, I don't want something. Oh my gosh, this one's clogged too. My word, I'm too, oh, hold on. <laughs> I, think my, I think my tube is bent. There we go. Let me get this one to go. I'm gonna steal this one because I want this color and there's no holding me back, guys. Although this could, be, this could be dangerous because I now have an open bottle of spray. There we go. Just gonna spray it in the water real quick. Ah. There we go. Ooh, my water is so pearly. There we go. Now we're in business. Just sprayed some water through there. All right. Nice. Ah, now you're back in business. There you go. Here, let me give you this one because I have it open. I'll take it. Thank you. You're welcome. Woo. All right. Cocktail party in the house. Ooh, cocktail. <laughs> so this is craft paper that I'm working on. And I mean, what I, I'm going to add a little bit more of that flickering candle. Um, there we go. What's nice about craft is that because it's so dark, right? Any kind of dark cardstock, it's just gonna hold the color so different, so, so different uh, than white. So you can see those colors on there. Whoa, look at that. Just beautiful saturation of color, but the paste, right, opaque, what's unique about this paste is that it absorbs color just like the paper. And what that means is instead of it acting as a resist, it's going to absorb the color. But because I put white paste over craft paper, the color is going to appear brighter on the background, right? Because it's not brown. So you can see the flower already looks brighter than the background, even though it's the same colors. Look at that. So cool. Just drawing it. And there's many, many things that we can do. So I'll show you in just a second what we can still do with this background. That's the, I think that's always the challenging thing. There's, we can either stop or you can do, you know, 10 other different things to a background. That's I think how we all are. So I'm just gonna dab this off. All right, so I'll show you the finish first and then I'll show you what else we can do. Okay. Nice. So here is our finished background. And you see, I mean, you see how just, <laughs> I hope the camera picks it up because the colors are just beautiful. See that cocktail party? Like even though I'm not really a pinky pinky guy, pinky mixed with stuff is really amazing. Okay, that's, that's a thing to remember because you might be like, oh, I don't really want pink. But like cocktail party with a little tart cranberry and see that fresh balsam? It's, it's just that sagey green. So it's not like, because I think if you throw in green on here, green and red make brown. So you just want to be careful, but that's really nice. But see those little hits of yellow first? Just I think amped up the color a little bit. If you wanted your flowers to be a little bit brighter, what's nice about the opaque texture paste, even though it absorbs color, so like I said, it stays pliable, it absorbs color, it will also give color back, unlike paper. It will give it back. So if I take a, a paper towel and just lightly mist it, and I place it over the background, 
Now, the longer you do, the more color is going to lift. You see how it just pulls that color out? So you can start lifting color to your liking. So see how I just made those even brighter? It doesn't take it all out. It doesn't take it back to white, but you have the ability to pull that color out of the paste if you want your flowers to be lighter. And that works on any kind of paper if you're working with the opaque paste, right? So it'll take color, but it will also give it back with a little bit of water. Really nice. So beautiful. Let's see, look at that. Mm -mm. Look at those beautiful micas. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay. So far that's been sprays and there's many, many things we can do with sprays and there's many more things we will still do with sprays today, depending on how long you want to stay and I'm going to go, but I'll just show you uh, real quick about the crayons because the crayons are really for, they're for coloring, but they also do some pretty unique things because they are uh, pearlescent. They have that, that mica base to them. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at all those sites. Oh, geez, Louise. The longer you stay on YouTube, the, the more the trolls show up, right? That's how it is. So when you look at how beautiful these colors are, right? So, so nice. You can color them direct, but you can also add some great textured effects. And what I mean by textured effects is I love, I love embossing. And I talk about this a lot. Um, my whole compartmental making, this is how I work. I work in, I don't, I don't need anything. This is how I work in, in just different ways of, of creating. So I'll sit there and just do embossed backgrounds, right? And I can just, I'll sit there and just emboss. So like skulls, right? I shared all the different colors. There they go in there. Or maybe I'm going to do some fall backgrounds or maybe the winter ones. Everything I've done, I just, or the wood grain ones, I have them in here. So whenever I need a background, I'm ready to, to go. It makes it so much easier just to, to sit and do. Same thing with embossing. If you have your machine out and your folders, just have a stack of paper and start, start doing cardstock, right? Just do that whole, whole stack of different papers, watercolor papers, craft stock, whatever you want to do and have some pieces at the ready. So this is, it's one of my favorites, little poinsettia. Uh, I think this will be pretty, right? The, this is kaleidoscope. So I love that it's a faceted 3D folder. And, oh, I think I'll do that poinsettia as well. There's pine branch. It's, they're just good. Oh, I like this one too. I like them all, to be honest. But it is nice to have some pre-embossed papers because then if you ever want to just sit down with a medium, you don't have to get everything out and start again. What's nice about working with the crayons, especially because they're, they're pearly, we can color directly onto a surface, okay? And then you can take a water brush. Ooh, I knew this had color in there. Let me squeeze that out. Ooh. Ooh, there's a lot of red in there. Okay, okay, there we go. I wanted to clean that out. Didn't want to cheat and use mica stain in there. But what you can do is just go in and blend out that color from the crayon. Now you can stay within the lines if you want, right? Or you can go outside the lines. This, I think, for those that like to color, which I am not your guy for that, um, is very therapeutic. People that like to color or like to fussy cut, you can go in it and do all of that. The nice thing about this also is you can color outside the lines and then go back in and ink blend because the embossed paper is going to take something a little different than flat paper. Me personally, I'm kind of a, I'm like a smudger. I don't, I like to smudge. So you can take the crayon and you can put it directly onto your finger because it's, again, it's like creamy. These, these are a little different and we can just rub over our embossed paper because the, the seasonal crayons, you can see, look at that shimmer. The seasonal crayons are just different because they have that, that mica in them. They are more, more creamy dreamy, okay? So you can just take these colors and just color directly onto your finger and then burnish that color over the top. And we can also mix colors. I think that's a, that's a nice thing about that. So we'll take a little bit of peppermint stick, okay? And if you don't want to color directly on your finger for whatever reason, you can also scribble them down and pick up color that way. I don't know. I, I kind of think just if I'm going to get my finger in there anyway, I might as well just color it direct. I prefer to, to know how much color, I guess I can feel how much color I'm, I'm putting on there. All right. So we've got that red. I am going to cap these. Now, when you change colors, you're going to want to 
clean your applicator. These will, this will clean off with water. So just, trust me, that's, that's clean. And we'll take a little bit of Harvest Moon. That'll be nice. See, a little yellow right there. Go right in the center. And of course, if you have multiple colors, you could also go in and do a little flickering candle. And you could color direct. You know, if you want to just add a little bit of that, you can color direct over the top. And let's take some greens. Take a little Wicked Elixir. You get the idea, but it's just really, to me, this is a super fun way uh, to color because it, it's like, it's finger painting. But I also like that I can still see the paper. Uh, they will always be water soluble. Brenda said, are they permanent? They are always water reactive, but you would have to get it wet. So uh, if you're familiar with distressed crayons, if you're not, you can uh, definitely check out some videos that I have on them because these do dry. So they actually dry, so they won't smudge to the touch. Uh, even if they get wet, they won't move unless you actually move it. Okay, so although they're water reactive, you would have to go in and physically move that color. But it's just a fun way to, to create on, on a background. And I love the soft look of that. I like that you're just using your fingers. Of course, you could go in and use brushes and stuff, but I think just seeing that, look at that, that wonderful shimmer. It's really subtle and really pretty, and I like that. I think the whole idea uh, behind uh, any of these backgrounds, and, and this could already be pre-colored, so this could be colored with ink or stain, and then you could add a color over the top. So let's take a little shiny bobble. Okay? If you want, you could you could color directly over the top of something. So let's say a design like this that has uh, some really high point detail, All right? So see how I have my crayon kind of flat. You can place that down, then take your finger clean and then just blend it out. So now you're getting those colors. You're still leaving the white space. So that's a little different than like using a spray, but now you can have that, that shine and you could go back and add a highlight if you wanted to. Oh, you could still go in with maybe, you know, some winter frost and you can add another, another color. We'll change blending tools and just add some highlights of that. So that's a whole other way. If you don't want to just stick to hitting the high points, you can go over an entire background. But I like the fact that it's going to leave the white space because it's, it's not wet. The crayon is, like I said, it's creamy. So it really allows you to go in with some significant pressure. You don't have to, like, I'm not really good at like being really light handed and I'm not with my pork chop fingers. So I like that I could be, you know, pretty aggressive to push that down and still have that wonderful little subtle shine of mica. So that's why I like having these crayons because they're creamier when you work with them and they have that, oh, there's a little crayon. There you go. They just have that really soft shimmer to them. They're not glitter crayons and it's not like that. It just has that, that sheen of mica. So again, and people have asked, like you should have these year round, but we won't. They're seasonal, and that's the beauty of having something seasonal, something to look forward to. Uh, it's having a seasonal release, and as long as people use them, and each year they do well, then, then Ranger will bring them back. I always get a little nervous when we bring something back after a time, because it's like, okay, it might come back once, but then maybe that's it. I don't know. Okay, beautiful things to do with crayons and water. Not really my jam, because you have to pay attention crayons and smudging. That's my jam. Finger painting all day long. Texture paste. Oh, so good. Okay. I'm building a little stash over here of stuff and that's going to be, my gosh, Mara, I've been, I've been busy. You have been busy. That's you okay. So much stuff oh, I got more stuff to go. We are not done. Okay. Move it on. <laughs> Let's say you want to color something else. Okay. Back in the day, we had this very popular product. Called beautiful. Crinkle Ribbon. Come on. Mario did this. That's why he's saying it's beautiful. He did a great job coloring the ribbons. You can see. Um, so back in the day with Ideology, we had a product called Crinkle Ribbon. And people loved uh, Crinkle Ribbon because it was a rayon ribbon, but it was a little thicker than seam binding. And it created beautiful ribbons. Well, it, it was retired a, a couple of years ago and people are like, I want it back. I want it back. But the, the truth of the matter is it just, it couldn't compete with stuff like this. So this is called seam binding ribbon, 100% rayon. I bought this on Etsy. You can just find it. Uh, this was a hundred yards of this ribbon. I think it was like maybe 15 bucks. So thanks Paula. Paula told me about this and they have in different uh, widths. This one's 14 millimeter, but you can buy different widths of this ribbon. And the great thing about this ribbon, it is a rayon. It's very thin. 
uh, but it will it will take color and you can use any kind of color. I'm not saying it only works with mica stain. You can use your ink pads to do it. You can do all of that. But the beauty of using it with mica stain is that your ribbons actually have a little beautiful shimmer to them. You see that? You see? Oh, there you go. Now you can see it. You can see that little bit of mica that actually stays on the ribbon. So people are like, do I need to seal it? No, you don't need to seal things. Stop sealing things. Um, you don't need to seal your work. This doesn't come off, but look at that beautiful shine and it goes right through the ribbon. It permeates through uh, the surfaces. And I love, I mean, I love the colors. And I'm gonna show you how you can create this ribbon. I like the idea. I prefer my ribbon to be like this, to be crinkly because you can see how the color gets lighter and darker. But if you wanted it to be perfectly even, you could. But the nice thing, I mean, with these colors, you can have ribbons for all seasons and you can mix and match. These are individual colors. So I said to Mario, like, you know, here's a piece, color it that color. But certainly you can mix and match your colors and create, you know, beautiful blends. But look at this one, fresh balsam. I mean, stop it right now. See, because you can see when that, when the mica hits that ribbon, that's where it becomes kind of those two-tone ribbons. And quite cheap. I mean, 100 yards for 15 bucks, come on. That's really, really cheap. It's almost free. Yeah. So I'm going to share how you can color this. It's really easy. So the ribbon, the ribbon's flouncy when you first get it. Um, the, no, the ribbon is very, uh, yeah, yeah, I did just, just for fun. Uh, so the ribbon is really, it's really soft and, and pliable at first. This is how it's dried. Meaning when you ink it, you can let it dry and it will dry flat and smooth. I like to crinkle it, so it's really just about how you dry it, and that's what I'm going to, to show you, all right? So there is no link. You'll just go on Etsy and type in seam binding ribbon. As long as it's rayon, you can find it. Uh, and obviously be careful uh, that you, you, you wanna buy white ribbon, otherwise you won't be able to ink it. Although black ribbon would be cool with like a little mica. Okay, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is work with the ribbon on a paper towel to start, okay? Add a little bit of water just like you would the paper. Not much, just a little bit of water because the same thing is going to happen uh, on this is that when the ink hits it, if it was dry, it would be a little bit more spotty, but by having a little bit of water, it's going to allow the colors to, to flow a little bit more. All right, this one, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna do a little festive. So we're gonna do a little tree lot. So I'm gonna shake this up, there we go. Add a little bit of that, nice tree lot. We'll even, um, where is, I keep, see, I keep going back to fresh balsam and I should stop, but I'm not going to stop because I like it, but I'm just gonna add that. So you can use as many colors as you want or one, it's completely up to you. You're gonna wanna flip it around a little bit as, you're, as we're going through the colors. Now, if we wanted to introduce a, a different color, we could, maybe I'll do a little bit of Decayed. Decayed is a great, it's more of a goldy, color that we did for Halloween. Really, really pretty. But I really love uh, how these colors, how these colors go. Okay. Ah, let's see. Mm -mm. Nice. And we're going to go right back to some tree lot because that was a, a little bit of dark green. And see, I'm just, I'm just kind of having a, a good time with this. You don't have to soak it. So I'll show you right now. You see, there's still some open space. All right. So next what I'll do, what's that? Hmm? <laughs> oh, that's okay. Just going to spray that a little bit more. I'm going to take the paper towel, fold it over. You could start with a clean one if you want. This is how the, the ribbon is going to ink. So you see what I mean? Like it will, it will go as flat as you want it to be, however you want to color it. The other ones were just using one color, but I like to use a little variety of color. If you take this and you wrinkle it in your hand, you kind of squeeze it, you're going to get all that extra dye to touch the other parts of the ribbon. You could wear gloves, but my hands aren't that inky if you don't soak your ribbon. But if you soak your ribbon, then that's on you, okay? Then if you need to get any color out, you can dab it with a paper towel. If you feel your ribbon is too dark, okay? You can add a little bit of water to it in a clean paper towel, squeeze it, and it will take out some of the color. That's gonna give you these kind of little white areas. So if you like more of that two-tone, that's what I like to do after I ink the ribbon is just, I have a clean paper towel that I use for just different colors, squeeze it up, and then you're just gonna let this dry. Now, if you let it dry like this, it will dry with that crinkly texture. The other nice thing about letting it dry like this is that wherever these ribbons are touching right now, because this ink is still damp, it's going to 
create darker ink lines. It's just going to have more of a, a tonality to it. It's not just going to be one flat color. Do you have to wait for it to air dry? No. You can also take the, this ribbon and you can use your heat tool to dry it. I just think it's a, a cool way to use the mica stain because yes, we've inked ribbon for, well, back in the ideology days we've inked ribbon, but having that little bit of mica, the fact that the mica actually stays onto that ribbon, really, really beautiful. It's just, it's nice. But I, I don't mind having inky fingers. To me, it's a, it's a creative badge of honor. I love that. But take a look at this, this ribbon that we've created. And that's, it's just so pretty. Beautiful, beautiful ribbon. Perfect for, perfect for the holidays. So that's one thing that you can do with ribbon. And obviously, I mean, look at this one for Halloween. Mm. Yeah, you could do black with Iron Gate. Oh, possibilities are endless with the ribbon. But then you could take the ribbon and the backgrounds that we've done, because let's face it, remember, we, we inked a bunch of stuff, we did ribbon, all this compartmental making. You can actually make something out of it. And this is another part of this demo that I want to remind you of. So demos are fun. Demos are fun to watch. Demos are fun uh, to, to chat with each other. But demos are pointless if you do nothing. Creativity is not a spectator sport. This isn't for you just to watchy-watchy and do nothing and then next year go, ooh, I wish I had time to make. If you have time to sit through three hours of me babbling, you have time to make, I assure you that. And I think that even doing a little bit will empower you to do a little bit more. Mario was saying this last night that like once I start, I can't stop. No, it's, can't. It's, it's a, to me, creativity fuels creativity. Right? Doing a little something before you know it, you're like, oh my gosh, it's been four hours. I've got ink everywhere. I'm having the time of my life. Creativity fuels creativity. So this is a perfect example of that, that sometimes sitting down to make something is a little too overwhelming because you have too many ideas. But if you have things done, if you have backgrounds done, if you have ribbon inked, if you have things cut, you can build very, very quickly. So this is just sharing an idea of, of making something out of nothing. So this is an ideology vignette box. I love vignette boxes because they're wood, they're inexpensive, they come in a set. And when you're creating, you can change things however you want. So I took this box, which is normally this charred wood, that's how it comes. But for Christmas, I used the new wood grain. I did nothing to it but glued it on, okay? Just glued it on with some collage medium. So I cut up that new Christmas wood grain. Then once it was on the box, did a little sandy sandy because I'm not a good paper cutter. So sandy sandy, which means when, when my paper sticks out over the edge, I don't try to go in and trim it. I just sand it off. That's what sandpaper's for. Sandy, sandy. Then I did a little inking, right? Just to create that little bit of brown on the seams It also kind of smoke and mirrors. Then I went over it with another layer of collage medium and used my glitter duster. Look at that. See, now you are, you know the tricks, right? That glitter duster right over wet collage medium over that paper. Now I've got that sparkly, glittery wood grain. Makes it look so Christmassy. And collage medium dries instantly. So by, I just paint a little bit, dust a little bit, paint a little bit, dust a little bit. So it's drying as you're going. It's, it's not a soupy mess that you have to, to wait, okay? So now you've got this wonderful background that's easy. You change something. Could you paint this? Yes. Could you do a million things to this? Yes. Most of the time we see things inside a vignette. That's what vignettes are for, to create things. But they make the best art panels because they come in different sizes and they come in squares and rectangles and trays and you can, you can sit them upright or they're light enough to hang on a wall and it gives you great dimension. So then after I took my wood grain panels and covered that, I had a couple of ideology pieces. This is an ideology frame. This is a Baroque frame. These are metal. There's two in a pack. And I thought, what a great foundation to put things in because I don't really like floaty floaties. I, I know some people, you know, some people like the whole thing floating in space. I'm not that. I need an anchor point. I'm not much of a wonky, but again, you do you. But frames are very cool to provide a foundational element for pieces. Sometimes when people don't know uh, where to put something or, or how to create a layout, frames are really nice for that because it's going to give you a focal point. So I took this frame. I also took one of the the Christmas word plaques, which I love these, and I antiqued it with Distress Crayon. Could you use paint? Absolutely you could. But the nice thing about the crayon, and could you use a mica crayon? Sure. But the white is really, I mean, it's great because I just scribble it on, right? So it's kind of flat like a cheese grater, but still very creamy. 
and I, I want to put on more than I need. I'm going to take some off, but I want to make sure it's kind of in those words pretty thick. And then using my fingers, I'm just going to rub that crayon into the area. Now, just like paint, the more you rub, the more you can take some away. But to me, this gives me more open time. And see how I can have that white just kind of build up. So if I want to take some out of the letters, I'll just use my fingers and take a look at that. To me, it completely transforms uh, the plaque from just the metal to having almost kind of like that little snow inside. So easy, okay? I did the same thing to the frame. So the frame just has that little bit of wintry edge. Could you do this with paint? Yes, you could do it with a million other products, but I just do the crayon because, well, it's quick. You saw that. Then I glue them down because they're done. I glue this down. I use collage medium again because collage medium is my glue of choice uh, when it comes to embellishments or paper because this can glue paper, metal, fabric, wood, plastic, rubber, glass, metal to metal, metal to glass. It dries clear and it shrinks and it's matte. It's completely invisible. So a little bit on the back, glue it down. Take my word plaque, glue that down. Then we've got these little hardware heads. You've seen us use them a lot. I just added those, did a little alcohol alloy to create that little gold, just so it looks like it's attached. Otherwise, you've got these holes, and I don't know, maybe you want to put some string through it. I don't know, you could tie it around the box, that would be cute. But then we get into where this whole seasonal stuff comes together, and that is, what can you create with stuff? Like, what do you create with the things, these backgrounds? People ask all the time, what do you do with backgrounds? Well, the truth is, you do whatever you want with them. So, taking these elements, all right, let me move this. Oh, I'll keep the train here. It's, it's not really in my way. I'm just going to go in. No, it's a different binder. <laughs> it's my Sizzix binder. But I do the same thing like around the seasons. If I'm going to do stuff, I'll kind of create a seasonal binder that sits out so I don't have to go and find all my dyes, even though all my dyes are categorized. Um, so I do this for fall because I love this dye for the leaves. I love these dyes for the flowers. This is one of the new ones, right? This is a great one because it's got greenery, an old school one, right? Small greenery. So elements that I think I might use, this one, believe it or not, this makes little pine cones. So the little, the little pine cone right there, right? That's actually the rose. So I've done videos on how to do the pine cone. And then I've got some, some florals. So there was my 3D folder. So it, that again is a time saving thing because I find that if I, as organized as I like to be, if I keep putting everything back for the season, then when I go to get out a die, I spend two hours looking at all my dies again. It's like, dude, be done. Same thing with stamps. Create a binder of just stuff that you want to use for that season, or at least to start. doesn't mean you can't go back and get something because an idea pops into your head, but it would certainly save you time from going through everything again and again and again. Then all I did was take a lot of my favorite dies and die cut all of those backgrounds. So see, there's all the mica. So all of these mica backgrounds, some were dark, some were light, some had water space, some, it, they were all different colors. But the beauty of having all of these little stained pieces is that the colors are just, besides the fact that they have the color themselves, that little shimmer, that shine is truly magical for a festive make. Here's a little pine cone pieces. You can see these. This is a little crooked broomstick and some decayed, right? I just love these pieces. Now, what these allow me to do is take these elements, cut them up, or in my case, I just rip them apart. I don't really cut them, ink the edges, and start creating an arrangement. I had no thought. Now, when I build an arrangement like this, I don't use collage medium because I don't have patience for this. I want to be a floral arranger. I want to be on my way. So this is where a hot glue gun comes in. So I start with my focal point. I start with my flower. So I take my flower. I've already done my inking. Maybe I use a, a shaping tool or maybe I just use my fingers and I just go in and, and bend the petals just to create something that's not flat. If I wanna do the little center, I've got those pieces that I've cut out of scrap, right? This I would use collage medium if I'm layering paper to paper. But on my build, I start with my floral in the center, and I'm sure some people are cringing going, no, Tim, that's not how you do an arrangement. That's what I do. I start with that because that's what I want room for. So I'll put a, a, a bit of hot glue on the back of that flower. Remember, everything's already on my box. Stick that down, and then I just take any of these pieces. After they've been inked, a little hot glue, and shove it under the flower. And all of these pieces now, you can see the mechanics, they're just layered, right? They're layered one on top of the other, just stuck in because you can start to see the arrangement you want. You can see things 
a little bit on the outside. You can see things where not everything has to be glued flat. That's really nice. That little pine cone, absolutely adorable. Just, could you use a real pine cone? Of course you could. Here's that little bit of ribbon. So this is the skinny one. So I, you already know how to color that. And then the new bells, the little ideology bells. So the tiny bells we did this year have this little jingle bell. I love it. It's a cute, I've always wanted a little jingle bell with that little ledge. So that's just tied right onto the middle. And it's simple, it's a simple make, but imagine, okay, how many of these you could, you could build. You could take a vignette set and you're gonna have four different size boxes. Or if you do the squares, you'd have three different ones. You could paper them all one day. You could die cut one day. You could just build flowers and cut your greens one day. Sit down with a glue gun and just, you're, you're off to the races. You could do so many different things with elements if you already had them, in my opinion, prepped. Then you can create this. And it doesn't have to be a vignette box. Maybe you find a panel. Maybe you find a gift box that you just want to accessorize. Totally fine. These leaves. These were the backgrounds that we did during the Halloween demo, right? All those wonderful mica stains. I love this die. This would be a great card front. This would be great scattered on a table. This would be nice stuck into a wreath or put onto a tag. There's many things that you can do with die cuts. The point is using the stuff, taking it from, from this to cutting it up and making it a card front or making it a panel or die cutting. Even if there's backgrounds that you don't like, die cutting things with texture and pattern super engaging, super interesting, because all of these pieces can be put to use. And so that's really the point to, to remind you that when you're, when you're using stuff, use it, make backgrounds, do something with the backgrounds. Otherwise you just end up with a bunch of backgrounds and maybe that makes you happy. Um, but it's really, really simple just to go in and create little pieces. It's nothing fancy. Honestly, I think this took me maybe, maybe 30 minutes start to finish because I already had these die cut. And all I was really waiting for were things to dry, okay? I love that, the whole idea behind it.